Yes, if they're not talking. Yeah. And again, we'll use the chat for questions for the most part, if you don't mind, and we'll make sure we can circle back to them. Great. Um, and uh, and as with everything, if you um, uh, if you do have questions, uh, put up your hands. I will stop at intervals uh, for questions. Uh, uh, but but I do appreciate that this is a lot of information um, and and there's really no way to avoid that. So uh, so we'll make breaks. Um, but what I would encourage you to do is to have a piece of note paper handy to like to scribble things down or uh, perhaps um, more beneficially, um, if you want to put your questions into the chat, I'm not actually looking at the chat, so I won't I won't answer them straight away, but Helena will mark it down. Um, and what we might do because of I, I do have an outline here. Um, what we might do is if your if your question is not part of that particular section, Helena might wait till the section that it, it's involved because it's possible I'll answer the question uh, straight away. OK, um, I'm just going to start by sharing my screen. Oh, I can get through there. We're going to share that. All right, can you guys all see my screen? Yep. Um, actually, Helena, one, you don't unmute your microphone because you can tell me what people are saying there. So um, if you can, I'd like to just uh, start with a land acknowledgement. Um, we begin by acknowledging that though we are meeting virtually, we are all on land that has been inhabited by Indigenous people for thousands of years. In particular, we acknowledge that the Special Olympics Ontario office is located on the traditional land of the Huron-Wendat, the Haudenosaunee, and most recently, the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nations. This land is governed by the Dish with One Spoon Covenant between the Haudenosaunee Confederacy and the Confederacy of Ojibwe and Allied Nations. Today, this meeting place is still the home to many Indigenous people from across Turtle Island, and we are grateful to have the opportunity to work, live, and play on this land. OK, um, the rest of this presentation will not involve um, a. Uh, sorry, well, sorry, will not involve a, a PowerPoint presentation. Um, today we are going to be covering uh, the basics of of GMS um, and GMS is is uh, is stands for games management system. It's um, it's a piece of software that was uh, created um, in um, sorry. I, I think the late 1990s, uh, the mid to late 1990s. It was originally um, a like Windows 3.1 based uh, piece of software um, that was um, intended to help and assist um, with the running of competitions. Um, this program has actually expanded um, over the years to include um, the running of major games, um, all of the aspects of major games. And so what we're going to be talking about today it's going to be just a very specific subset of the features of GMS, but when um, but when we do talk about it, um, like you are going to notice a whole bunch of different things, um, and so don't be scared by that um, because the truth is is that we only use about ten percent of GMS um, when we're running regular competitions. Um, the a lot of the functions uh, that include things like uh, connecting to timing systems and things like that are things that we might use at a major games, uh, but they aren't necessarily anything that you're going to need to worry about. Um, so that's the, the first thing that you need to know. The second thing you need to know is that the full training as we outlined, uh, you know, when we were creating an outline is probably about a little more than two hours long. Uh, when Special Olympics International runs this training, uh, they run it for like two and a half hours or like half a day. Um, I am not going to subject you to that. That seems both cruel and unusual. Um, but what we are going to do is I'm going to try to get you through the core functions of GMS um, over the next hour. Um, I'm going to try to get that done by about 11 o'clock or 11.15. Um, and then what, uh, but what I will do is I will stay on the line, right? You know, so if there are things that we haven't covered or things that you're confused about, um, that you would like to ask questions about, um, I will absolutely make myself available to do that. Um, and I would, I would, I guess, front load this by saying, don't be concerned if you're confused. That's pretty much to be expected. Um, both Helena and myself and, and others that are on this call, um, you're, there are actually a number of people on this call who have done this training before, and that's okay, uh, because the, the trick with GMS is that if you don't use it frequently, you kind of forget all the little fiddly things that you've got to do with it. And so a refresher is a good idea. Um, and the first thing that I'm actually going to show you is where to get help if you need it. Um, but I would also uh, 
say, hold on to my email address. Um, and if you have questions or Helena, um, don't hesitate to um, to use that email um, uh, to to ask questions or to kind of go from there. Um, the only thing I don't know. Oh, there we go. OK, um, yeah, perfect. Does that make sense? OK, you guys can still see my screen, right? The big blue screen. Yep. Okay. Yes. Just, yeah. You can just nod. There, good. Perfect. OK, so I'm going to start by um, giving you a link. Um, and this link, if you haven't already seen it, it's it's it was the link that Jen circulated. OK, and it's you can find it here. Um, OK, so Special Olympics Ontario a couple of years ago, uh, probably three years ago now or four. Um, created a support site and that's what you're going to see in front of you and I'm actually going to start here because almost all of the questions that you innately need to answer or where you need to find those answers can be found on this website. And that includes the ability to be able to download the software, um, use the software, uh, ask like, you know, um, find the most the, the most current reports, um, for example. We, we, we do try to keep this up to date. Uh, one of the things that we did ask is don't don't download anything. <laughs> Uh, last night, and the only reason for that was is that, uh, to be honest, because of COVID, the last time we had to update this site was January 2020, and the um, they've actually released a couple of versions of GMS since then. So I realized um, that we were going to have you download the wrong one. That's okay if you did, um, because I'm actually going to show you today how to update GMS, which does happen from time to time. Uh, and so if you need to update it, uh, we'll show you how that works too. OK, um, on this site, I'm just going to walk you through it. You'll see uh, basic information about how to get started, training resources, which are predominantly from Special Olympics um, International. Uh, the big things you're going to want to know are setup um, and upgrading and resources because they're predefined um, custom support reports that we've created for you so that you don't have to go to that trouble. Trust me when I tell you this is gold, right, because um, because in, in the latest versions of GMS, if you want to report and you don't want to use the Special Olympics International reports, which are almost universally not what you need, um, the like you have to create the reports yourself. Um, we had a ton of trouble with, with people early on who were trying to create these reports. And so we simplify that. Uh, we created, no, no joke, 66 different types of reports. Honestly, if you can't find the report you need in that pile of reports, contact us. We're pretty sure we'll be able to tell you where they are. OK, so the uh, so and and if not, if you, if you found a report that's needed, uh, we can add it to that set. We update the report set about once a year. Um, uh, the, the one that you have right now will say 2019, and that's only because we reviewed it in December of 2019 for the 2020 games. Um, we haven't really had the 2020 games in Thunder Bay. We haven't really had a game since then. Um, so as a result, uh, uh, that set is probably still pretty accurate, but we will update it and we do check it on a fairly regular basis. Okay, all right. So let me start. Um, first of all, if you wanna just uh, quick show of hands um, or maybe just if you wanna just type in, uh, just uh, if, has everybody here downloaded GMS and, and installed it? And it's okay to say no if you haven't done that yet. Yeah, you you have. Okay, perfect. Um, no. Okay. So I'm gonna I'm gonna show you really quickly how to um, how to get um, and install GMS. Um, I, I'm also gonna ask that today we're gonna actually run some some test data. And what you might want to do is after you've got all this test data is actually delete GMS off your system and start again. Um, just so you've got a clean copy after we're done today, because uh, we're gonna create a little bit of a mess as we go. Um, all right, to to get GMS, the easiest thing to do is just here. It's just click on um, getting started or set up. And what you'll find there is the ability to download a, and request a registration key. If you fill in this form, it will send you both a link to the copy of GMS as well as the um, uh, as well as some instructions about how to get started. And most importantly, it will send you a registration key. Now, I know um, a couple of people had emailed us and said that the, the links weren't, this form wasn't quite working for them. Uh, you do have to fill out the entire form in order for it to go through. Um, and one of the things that people often have trouble with is this question here. Which format of GMS are you requesting? 32-bit or 64-bit or I'm not sure. It's totally okay to answer I'm not sure because you'll just get the links to both. I would suggest to you that if you were using a computer that was purchased within the last like 10 years, it's probably 64-bit. 
right? So you probably want to select 64-bit as your default. 32-bit computers were pretty much before 2000, okay? So um, there is a way to check. If you want to look uh, to see what your what your computer uh, is, there's a link here, and I'll um, I'll give you this link right now. Hold on a second here. Um, so I just put this link into your into the chat. You don't need you don't need to do this. I, I would strongly suggest that you probably have the 64 uh, bit version, but um, but you can use that link in order to figure it out. Okay. Um, all right. For those of you who have not downloaded it not downloaded um i'm also going to just for simplicity's sake uh we're not allowed to publish the link i'm about to give you publicly which is why it's not on the website um i'm going to give you the link to the 32-bit version hang on a second here copy that's weird There we go. OK, I'm going to give you a link to the 32-bit version. If you click on this link, it will immediately download a file. You might get, um, uh, what do you call it, a Windows Defender security error. And if you do, just ignore it. Um, it's just because um, it doesn't recognize that file um, and that location. But uh, uh, you, uh, you can download that. I promise it's safe. <laughs> um, and that will download a zip file to your computer. In fact, I'm going to do it right now, so you'll see what happens. Um, so this will download a, oh, well, that's awkward. There we go. OK, so you'll see up there at the top, it's downloading a file to my computer. Uh, when it downloads the file to my computer, it'll be sitting on my desktop. It's apparently going to download it several times because I've clicked it too many times. Um, that file will um, is, is going to be what we're going to use to install um, uh, GMS, OK? The other thing that I'm going to give you, um, if you haven't already installed it, is the registration codes. That's this right here, OK? Now, what's going to happen is when you, when you click on that file, so that file is currently located in downloads. Uh, when you click on that file, it'll unzip the file, OK? So you're going to just click on the file. You can click Extract All. It'll unzip the file. And you can choose wherever it is that you want to unzip that particular file. Um, I'm, I'm trusting that you guys know how to do this. But once you've unzipped the file, what you're going to do is you'll get a folder that looks like this, right? It'll say GMS 7.5.10B251, right? When you open that file, it has a bunch of files in it, OK? What I'm going to ask you to do today, if you haven't already done this, is you're just going to pull that file onto your desktop, and we're going to work from the desktop today. It doesn't have to be on the desktop. It can actually be anywhere you would like to put it, if you want to put it in your documents folder or uh, something like that. I keep it on my desktop just because it's easier to find. Um, it's a very, GMS is actually a very small program. It doesn't actually use a lot of resources on your computer, it doesn't hog it. As a result, you can use it on like really old Windows machines, and it's not a, uh, a huge problem uh, at all. Okay. The um, the the James, other thing that you need to know. Yes, yeah, sorry. James, just very James, quickly, um, um, is there a is preferred, preferred uh, platform like uh, Google uh, Chrome or Firefox? Like, is there is there a difference between the um, browsers in getting this information to this point? For the uh, no, there is not because the the website is literally just a resource website. It's not used by GMS at all. It's just that's something we created. So so no, you don't need to worry about which web browser you use. Uh, unless you're using Internet Explorer like 3.0, uh, you shouldn't use that for anything. So uh, like, so just stay away from that. All right. So uh, but pretty much everything else works. Um, yeah. OK. Um, when you have that folder um, and you'll see I've actually renamed it, rename it. Um, rename it to something because this is going to be the, the the GMS that's on your desktop. So as you can see, I've actually already got this folder already unlocked, um, and it's here. Uh, and and you'll see that it's it's pretty similar. You're going to notice that there is a difference if you download the 32-bit version or the 64-bit version, and the difference is in this file name. Okay, that file name when you're running 64-bit will say x64. When you're running 32-bit, it'll just say GMS7. Okay. Both of them will work on a 64-bit machine. On a 32-bit machine, this one will not work. Okay. Um, don't again, don't panic about that. If one of them doesn't work, just go back and download the other one. That's pretty much the easiest thing I can tell you. Okay. All 
All right, when you have uh, the, the software open, the first time you run the software, and this is gonna be the, the quick install, um, what you're gonna do is you're just gonna double click on it. And I'm gonna just show you how fast this actually is. It's gonna give you a registration key here. The registration key is the thing that I just gave you. So you're gonna type under your, your username, it's Special Olympics Ontario. Under your organization name, it's also Special Olympics Ontario. And for your serial number, it's the serial number that I put in. Everybody in Ontario uses the same serial number. There is a different serial number for uh, every chapter in the country, um, and, and that's fine. The software is free to use for anybody that is part of or affiliated with Special Olympics. Um, I, I can't stress enough how valuable that actually is. Um, if you are actually purchasing this sort of software, if many of you, if you're swimmers, um, you've heard of high tech, uh, which is, or, or finish links or systems like that, they cost like hundreds of dollars, if not thousands, right? So um, for licenses. Um, so this is a pretty big thing that it's free. The reason that we can't publish it, however, um, like, like upline, is that for those of you who volunteer in hospitals, um, it's the same code base as this thing called VSYS that a lot of hospital use, hospitals use for volunteer management. Um, uh, and so there's there's just a few proprietary things that we have to make sure that we're careful of. So um, so you don't need to worry about that, but just know that that's why we don't just circulate the thing. Okay. Um, once you do that and you enter it, it's going to ask you to connect to which database. This is a screen you will see, particularly if you have multiple databases in the system. And an example I could give you of having multiple databases is that if Duncan was running all of his snowshoeing competitions and wanted to keep them all together in one database, he could then take his track programs and create a different database and still use the same GMS and just select which database he wants to use. The vast majority of us, including us here at the office, is we, we actually only separate databases based on if it's major games or like local competition and even there. Um, so we generally put them all into one database. I would suggest that you do the same thing. It's easier, but you do have the capability of doing something different. You will not be able to start GMS. You'll notice that there's a cancel button here until you create a database. But once you've created the database, you never have to do it again. Okay. So to create a database, all you're going to do is you're going to click on tools. And you'll see here it says set up database connections. Just click on set up database connections. And you'll notice that you get this like kind of blank screen. All of these instructions, by the way, are in that, that setup site. So you'll be able to go step by step if you need to. To create a new database, you're going to click create new. And it's going to ask you if you want to choose SQL Server or Nexus DB. SQL Server is if you're you're using a server online. The only group that's really doing that is us, right? Is the provincial office because we can access it from all over the province. Um, Nexus DB is if you're using it locally on your computer. So you're going to select Nexus DB, and then you're going to see that you have some options over here. They look complicated. I promise you, they are not. For connection name. You're going to name it whatever you want that's useful to yourself. So as an example, I'm going to say that this is going to be called the test database for May 8th, OK, for today's training. And then I'm going to see down here, there's an option that says connection type. You don't need to worry about anything else. But down here, it says connection type. It says connect to a Nexus DB server. Or if you drop it down, it says work with local data files directly. That's the one that you want to use. Work with local data files directly, only one user at a time. OK, so you're going to select that. And then the last, well, I guess the second last thing that you want to do is over here where it says folder with data files. You want to tell it where you want to store the data. And so I'm going to come back to that folder that you created. If it's on the desktop or wherever that folder happens to be. When you click on this little button right here, it looks like a folder. It'll show you your computer. And in this case, I the 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 spot that I'm going to put my data is going to be in that folder that I created, which was called GMS Training May 8th. Or it could be the folder that you see, which is GMS 7.5.10. It's entirely up to you. But you just have to make sure you know where you're going to put this stuff. If I click here on this little arrow, it opens up the folder. And I'm going to click Make New Folder. And I'm going to make it a folder called Data. OK, and I'm going to put that data folder inside this GMS training folder. So make sure you click the GMS training folder and then you click data. 
And you'll see there, I've created a data folder, okay? The reason you wanna put it in a separate folder is because this creates a whole bunch of tables and it'll it'll end up making a mess of this folder. So it's better to stick it into like a, it's an individual folder. It'll work even if you don't, okay? So you're gonna click okay. And now you'll see that there's a path to that data, okay? The last thing that I'm gonna do here is a notice to show on screen when the connection is used. I usually fill this in, you do not have to, but what you're gonna do is you're gonna type in um, something that will appear on the screen just so you know which database you're using. And I'm gonna say, this is the test May 8th database, okay? And then the last thing I do is I click these two buttons. These two buttons are extremely important. You're gonna click test the database connection to make sure that the database works. And then you're gonna say, okay. And then the last thing you're gonna do is click validate database schema and indexes please click that button because when you click that button it'll actually create all of the tables that are missing and so when i click next it's going to go through and create my entire database so you click next next and finish it goes through it creates everything that we need um as you can see it's pretty speedy and then the last thing you do is you click save and once you've clicked save you'll see that i now have a Nexus test database right in there. If I want that to be my default database at startup, which I do, I'm gonna just drop this down here and click select. I'm gonna select that database. It'll automatically save that at startup. Now I can click close. And now when I start up, I'm gonna see test May 8th. And I no longer need to worry about this. Every time I click GMS now, this will automatically be set. I don't have to do any of the things that we just did. Okay. And then we're going to go into GMS just by clicking connect. And here we are. OK, I'm going to stop there for just one second. I don't think there'll be a lot coming out of that. But um, uh, Helena, are there any questions coming up? Uh, not so far on this topic, no. OK, good, perfect, excellent. Um, if people do have any questions on that or need help installing, um, my suggestion is going to be let's go. Let's get hey, James. The whole yep. Quick question. I don't know why I've set it up as Nexus, not the local database. Is going to make a difference? Yes. If you, you need to set it up as Nexus local, because if you want to set it up as Nexus DB, I mean, if, you, if you've if you got the um, kind of computer background, you could set up like a local Nexus server and then oh, run it oh, as a Nexus server. But if you, if you don't want to do that, and I wouldn't really suggest it, like if you don't want to do that, um, or don't want to run a server-based uh, version, you need to select local. Okay, do I need to redo it or just keep it at that as is? Because I've been using that forever. Didn't realize oh, really? the okay. difference. Yep. Well, it might still say Nexus DB and it'll okay. still be local bingo. Yeah, we can check on it later if you okay, want. Later. Okay, later, okay. You can look at it, okay? Thanks. So that's not, but if it's been working, you probably set it up right. You know if okay. it wasn't working. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right, once you've done that, so for everybody who has already installed GMS, um, I would ask you to go into GMS now and you will see um, this screen, okay? Um, and you're gonna notice a few things about the screen that are, are pretty important. Um, okay, on the left-hand side, you'll see, remember how we put in a, an alert that tells me which database I'm using? That's showing up there under warnings. Again, I don't think you'll need to worry about that too much. We have to worry about it all the time um, at, at the provincial office because we're often using a bunch of different GMSs, and there have been times when we have entered in hundreds, sometimes even thousands of records into the wrong GMS and then had to redo the entire thing. So um, we're gonna try to, uh, so that's what we use to tell you that. Over here, you're gonna see something that says build 251, okay? That just means that you're, the version of GMS you're running, and sometimes I'll ask you that. And then down here, you're gonna see um, just a, a few things around user preferences. Uh, the GMS Learning Center will take you to uh, the SOI GMS site. Um, now I've shown you uh, our site, um, and just to be clear, um, where our site is here, you're gonna see that under resources um, and FAQs and training, a lot of the SOI resources can be found there. Just by clicking on them, you'll be able to find them, including quick guides and learning and things like that. So these are the same things uh, and they'll get you to the same spots, but they're very, very useful resources. If you go to, into, GMS Learning Center, you'll find all kinds of documentation and videos and fact sheets. So if you're stuck, sometimes it's the easiest way to kind of go through 
and say, oh, well, what I really want to do is this. And here's how you create your event definitions. Here's how you division those sorts of things. And they even have video clips that kind of go with it, right? So um, uh, I don't know if they're doing it right now, but they used to do a monthly or um, like a GMS support call, uh, like video. Um, I, I don't think they've done it in a little while, um, but but they do have a lot of support and they're very responsive actually uh, when we run into trouble. So don't don't hesitate to use them. Um, I know uh, I know Bingo has um, and and a few of us have. I I use them. So like if if we get stuck, that's often where we go. All right. The other thing that you're going to notice is this, and I'm actually going to show you what it looks like just so you see it. If you are running an older version of GMS or you downloaded it earlier, um, you might encounter this message. I'm just going to show you what it looks like. Uh, okay, so you'll see here that this is, um, okay, you'll see here that you can see it's it's GMS 1. Point, sorry, uh, 180. You might see something like this, a yellow bar at the very top. That bar is important, okay? So it'll say, it'll tell you when a new version of GMS is available and will give you a link to download it. So we've already got the current version on, on our SOO site, but if, if you are using an older version of GMS, just click download. It will take you to a screen and it will download um, the software. If you are using Microsoft Edge, sometimes it will block it because for the same reason as before, it'll say this is blocked because it could harm your device. It's only saying that because it's an executable file, but that executable file is coming from a secured server uh, that's operated by Special Olympics International. The file is safe, okay? So I promise you that. What you need to do to get around it is just click keep. Um, it'll warn you again, because that's just how Microsoft works. Just, just click more and click keep anyway, okay? And then download that piece of software. When you download that file, all you have to do to upload your update your system, okay? And so I'm gonna show you this right here is you'll see that it's downloaded and executable. You can see it right here. I'm just highlighting it there. Okay, so do you guys see it? That file just needs to be dragged into your folder. That's it. So if your folder already has the GMS 7x64 file, you're just gonna take it and copy it right over the previous file. It'll ask you if you wanna replace it. You say yes, it'll replace that file, and then that's it, you're up to date. Okay, and, you're, and your system will be updated, okay? Um, it's not automatic, unfortunately, but you do need to uh, to do it. Uh, Windows might again protest. If it does, just click more info and say run anyway. Okay, <clears throat> and then you'll see. See, look, it's updated, and we're there. Okay, so I'm just going to connect us in. Okay, <clears throat> so that's updating. If you run into trouble, um, my best solution to you is to just again download the one from us um, and then just install it. It's 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 not the end of the world. OK. Now what we're going to do is we're just going to take you through uh, the basics of of GMS. Um, so I'm I'm going to show you a few screens um, and I, I'm going to give you one helpful piece of advice that we try to tell everybody, which is GMS is a little unusual because of the way it was designed in that some things that look like buttons are not right, you know, and some things that are buttons don't look like buttons. And I say that to everybody that we train at GMS. So my general rule of thumb is when in doubt and you can't find anything, click it. Like, do you mean if you're not sure, just click on it, right? Because it's possible that it will it will click, right? Like, so as an example, you'll see up here, I can click on any of these things and they'll work. These all work as well. This button works, right? But like, but sometimes you'll see a see a see an icon, and you won't even notice that it's underlined, and you you can click on it. Like create new games up there. That's a button. Okay. So like, so we um, so you, so you, so click when you don't, you're not sure. Okay. And James, the other thing, James, yes, yeah. Right click in the space will also maybe make something happen. <laughs> Correct. Yes, exactly. And that was actually going to be uh, like the next thing I tell you. Right click is your best friend. If you are not currently using a mouse that has two buttons, get one, right? You know, or if you're using a trackpad, um, a lot of trackpads, if you press with two two fingers, will open up like your, will be the same as a right click. So figure out how to do that because right clicking gives you a ton of options. And you'll notice that if, um, like you'll notice a little bit later that when I right click on certain things, it gives you, see, it gives you certain um, options that weren't there. 
or, or that you wouldn't normally expect to be there. OK, so so just be aware of that. Uh, lastly, and this is probably one of the few things we don't have any games in here yet, but when we do, you're going to notice that when you're in a games, it looks very similar to when you're in the home screen, which is this screen right here. And so I'm just going to give you an example um, just so you can see what this looks like uh, when you have a lot of games and a lot of things going on. Um, so I'm just going to load up the Special Olympics JMS here. OK, so what you'll see here is, um, so you can see I, I've got a note here that says SO network, so I know which one I'm using. And ours is going to be test. But when you're when you're using the SOO games, I'm sorry, when you're using a lot of games, you'll see that your screen has a lot of options on it. So the first option is person lookup. Then uh, if you're trying to find somebody, so just as an example, if I'm if I'm trying to find a person, and let's just say that I was looking for Helena, it's actually as simple as clicking on find a person, and I'm going to type. Um, and you'll see that it pops up people uh, whose names are Rosenberg, right? Helena um, and Patricia, who's Helena's daughter. You might also find that if I if I typed this incorrectly, it will still find them. That's actually one of the better parts of GMS is that it searches based on like structure of a word. So if I type Smith, um, it'll actually find Smythe and all variations of Smith as well. Um, oh, actually, maybe not the one with the Y. This might be a bad example. Um, yep, there you go. So if I type Smith, you're going to find um, people with with different variations on Smith, Smithson, Smith with an E, Smith, Canatero, like so on and so forth, all the way through. Uh, when you find somebody, and if you click on them, you'll find all of the information that pertains to that particular athlete or volunteer, the type um, of athlete that they are. And in cases where they're in more than one games, um, I can actually see which games that they're in um, and, and what they've done. So um, so that's that's useful and it's it's actually quite Im Im important. You'll, you'll see that we can look here and find uh, past games. So I can see that that uh, Alicia was in a number of different games. These were her, uh, her events that she was entered into and so on and so forth. That becomes extremely important when you're going back in time, um, because if you were running an event where you want to get qualifying scores, you can grab the qualifying scores from previous events. Or if you know that you're running the same event again, you can just duplicate the event with the people that are in the games. So, um, so that's very, very useful. OK, so that's your person lookup. But again, I'm just going to come back to just showing you here that the home screen shows you the ability to, sh to look up the entire system. And then games will show you the individual games that we're working with. So if I clicked on Ann Ottenbright, which was a swim meet, um, it'll open up that swim meet. And then you're going to see up here at the top, it says Ann Ottenbright. OK, and then there's kind of a breadcrumb trail. So as I start going into events and say going into swim, 400 meter freestyle, you'll see that it now says, GMS 764 and Ottenbright and now the swim, right? So so this breadcrumb trail tells you where you are in the system. And most of the time you're going to be operating at the games level, right? That's actually where you need to be. But if if you end up down here at the main system level and you close, it's going to shut GMS down, okay? You actually don't do a lot at this level. The, the main system level allows you to look at people across the entire system in every games. It also allows you to see all of the games that you've got. And, and the most important part in the, in the main system is the transferring, because when you transfer, you can actually export a games or import a games or import reports. And we're going to do all of that in, in a couple of seconds. OK, so we're going to show you how that works. All right. Does this does that make sense? OK, so this is what the system looks like. But as you can see that when I get into games, it looks almost the exact same. The difference is, is that it'll show you delegations, which is another word for teams. It'll show you the events, but then everything else is pretty much the same except for timing systems, right? So, so just be aware of where you are uh, at any moment because that's, uh, that's, well, that's useful information. OK, um, any questions about that? Um, I would I would generally encourage people to explore 
click on a bunch of different things, see what they look like. You've got access to all of this. So um, it's a good place to uh, kind of get comfortable. Um, but you are actually starting from scratch. You don't have any games or any people or anything to, to work with yet, okay? We're gonna change that in two seconds. All right. Okay, great. So let's start with, um, sorry, uh, any questions? Nothing about this topic in the chat, James. Okay, good. Okay, just greatly went some of the wording on the left. Okay, um, you might, I, you might need to zoom in your screen a little bit. I don't know if I can, so just hang on just a second here. Is, 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 I, I'm assuming the screen's a little small, right? <clears throat> so let me just... Uh... I've just sent um, Payfun an email with a screenshot of what I'm seeing. So yeah. hopefully Payfun, I'm not sure if you're just not used to knowing what DMS looks like. Or... Um, it, it's also possible things. just because my screen is pretty high resolution. It's um, it's possible. It's just um, it's just small. So let me just uh, that me is just true. Okay. That yeah. is true. It seems like a very white screen with little text at the top. That's is, a little is, better. Is that better? I can I can bring it up a little bit more. That's no problem. Let's see just a second here. Okay, as is. Now I've, now I've got to scroll to find everything, but that's all right. Here we go. That's is that little, better? That's okay, no problem. Me, everybody okay. else? Yeah. It'll be a little fuzzy uh, just because I've literally doubled the size of the screen, but uh, but if you're having trouble reading anything, just let me know. But I think uh, this should be easier to read. Okay. I think we're good. Right. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, so we're going to do um, uh, a couple of things um, just to get ourselves started. Uh, just so you, you have an idea Bef before we even create a games, um, just so you can kind of see how it how it all works. Um, and the first is how you create a person. Okay, so um, so what you're going to do is every I'm going to ask everybody to create a person. Okay, and the way you do it is if you click here where it says personal person lookup or data entry, you're just going to click find people by person by person name. <clears throat> and you'll see on the left you have the option to create a new person. You're going to get a lot of these like help buttons down here. Feel free to look at them because they'll they'll help you out. To create a new person, all you do is click create a new person. Um, it's pretty simple. Um, and then you're going to choose the type of person that you want to create. So for the moment, let's create an athlete. Okay, so we're going to create an athlete. And then you're going to give it some general pieces of information. So I'm going to say that the athlete is male. Um, the date of birth, again, you can drop it down to get a calendar or you can just type it in. It's pretty good at figuring out dates. Um, so if I'm going to say person was 1991, um, and then the group at the moment is going to be general. Okay, so that just means that it's putting them in a big pile of people. We can reorganize people later if you want to, or you can create groups for people um, in order to organize them. But at the moment, we're just going to put everybody into one, one pot. And the person's name is going to be Jimmy Norman. OK. And then we're going to click Continue. And what it's going to do is the first thing it's going to do is it's going to go and it's going to check to see if Jimmy Norman is already in the system. If Jimmy Norman's already in the system, it'll find the person and it'll click them off. But you don't need to worry about that if, um, if, if you don't want to. The second thing you're going to notice is that there is a ton of information that is being requested here. And I'm going to tell you flat out, you don't need to answer any of it other than date of birth, gender, and name, the um, and the type of person that they happen to be. The reason that you don't that, that all this information exists is because a significant number, and by a significant number, I mean more than the majority of um, Special Olympics chapters around the world and in the United States particularly use GMS as their database. We don't because uh, you guys have all experienced the portal. Um, and it's, uh, but truthfully, GMS is way worse, right? Like, you know, from that perspective. So, but that's the reason it's got a lot of this other information. The information that you need to worry about for the purposes of today, name, date of birth, gender, type, and group. And one other thing actually is you want to make sure that they're active. You will notice sometimes when we send you a file, somebody might be banned or inactive, and that could just be because they're, they've passed away or something has happened. Um, but then the other one that you want to be aware of is this one right up here. 
if there are any swim coaches in the house, um, requires a wheelchair and or handicapped accessible locations. If you tick this button off, when you division, it will automatically assign them to an outside lane, which is extremely useful. You don't have to do it if it's ticked off. So when you're taking registrations, that's a really easy way of setting things up um, properly, okay? And then we're gonna click save. That's it, Jimmy Norman is now in the system and I can use him wherever it is that I want. Got it? James? It yes. Um, the SOO number. Yes. Where does that go? That's a good question. Um, we, generally speaking, we would ask you to put the SOO number under additional data um, under person number right here. Okay. Um, when we start synchronizing, uh, we actually have another field that we use for it, but person number is where we go looking for the SOO number. So we'll, we'll always find it in that spot. Okay. Um, but for a lot of the competitions you're doing, you may not even need to worry about it. Uh, it's just, it's just be aware of it. That's where we would go. Um, Remember I was saying that you have options if you right click. So if I right click on Jimmy's name now, you'll see that I've got all kinds of options here. I can show check boxes, show different columns if I'm trying to find different things about him. Um, I can create a new person. I can open him as read only. I can delete him from the system. Um, I can deduplicate him. If you've got more people with the same name, you can actually choose two people and merge them together. Uh, lots of different things that you can do here. I'm not going to go into all of them other than to say, play with it. You'll find some really cool things you can do. One thing you will see from time to time across the board is show checkboxes. If you click on show checkboxes and you have a whole bunch of different names, you'll be able to select multiple people and then do multiple things with them over here in the corner. Okay, so that's actually really useful if you're trying to select a bunch of people at once. Okay, you can even print reports for, for, for people. That is people, okay, within the system. Okay, the next thing that we're going to do, and we're going to do this part together just so that we have it and it's accessible. Um, so I'm actually going to jump ahead if this is possible. I'm going to show you GMS transfer before we go and start working in games because games is, is, a, is a crucial function. GMS transfer is probably the most important way of getting help. And it's going to be the way that, that Helena or myself or others can, can, can give you a hand, right? And what it allows you to do is it allows you to take games within the system, put them into a package, and send them to whoever it is that you need to do. And usually they're fairly small. What that means is, is that if you're in, tr in trouble and running into um, issues, you can actually send me a copy of the games that you're working with. We can troubleshoot it. And then even better, we can send it back to you um, like fixed, right? Do you know what I mean? Which, which makes a big difference. Um, I'm going to show you how to do two things in GMS. Um, transfer okay and so the first thing is going to be this sorry i'm gonna have to decrease the size of my screen here a little bit um in uh in the website so in the website here under resources sorry under resources right here you will see uh the option to download a report set the latest soo report set I'm actually going to make this easier for you. So in your chat, just grab this link and you can use it straight away. OK, uh, that is the latest SOO report set that we have. And if you click on it, it will download. Uh, the other thing that I'm going to do, and this I actually need you to do right now. Um, so I want you to grab both of these two files is um, so I'll give you a couple of seconds to grab it is I'm going to give you some training data and the training data is for today. Uh, it's just people that we've entered into the system so that you don't have to type 20 people, right? Um, once you've learned how to enter one person, that's fine. We're going to show you, uh, we're going to make it easy for you to um, to do that, okay? So, so download those two files um, just by clicking on them. And you should end up with two files, which I'm just going to grab now too. Okay, GMS test. And... GMS reports. Okay, it's going to bring those two down as uh, as files. I'm going to close that. Okay, good. So now I've got these two files, and what I'm going to ask you to do is just put those files somewhere that you can remember them. So um, for the moment, I'm going to put them on the desktop. Um, that's not always the neatest way of doing it, but that's where I'm just going to stick it um, for the moment, just so I can find them. But feel free to to put that wherever you want. Okay, and uh, just know where they are. All right. Now what we're going to do is this. And show you how to do an import. Um, so, for
For GMS Importer, you'll see that you have the option to export people, export reports, export templates, or, or import, right? When you import, you can import reports or you can import um, a whole games using this, this method at the bottom. So I want you to choose GMS transfer and then choose GMS transfer importer. Okay, when you do that, you're just gonna have to find the spot that it's located on. So I put it on the desktop and you'll see there that I've got my test file. That's my test data. And you'll see it's really small because there's not a lot in there. And my reports, which is this one right here, my 2019 reports, okay? Oh, sorry, no, it's actually this one right here, Peter. That's, okay, the 2020. What we're gonna do is we are going to select um, GMS test first, okay? So what I'd like to do is I'm gonna import the games. So I'm gonna select GMS test. You'll see down here it says GMS test, and I'm gonna click open. As soon as I do that, GMS recognizes that this is a games file, not a reports file, and then it, it provides all of the information that's necessary for creating that particular games. And you'll see here it's got import these games, what import method I want. I can choose to import the complete games or I can even import specific events if I want to. So, so if I only want to grab 100 meters, I can do that and update. Um, I can choose to import very specific events within the games, right? So um, not just sports. I can also import only certain delegations. In this case, I've got the Brampton Panthers that are in there. And then I create groups if they don't exist and so on and so forth. Generally speaking, you can leave these settings alone, but you do have the option of adjusting your settings as you need to. This here says import only new or updated people. That's useful so that you don't create new people every single time. And then I'm gonna click run. You'll see how fast this actually goes. When I click run, across the bottom, it's grabbing the whole games and it'll show you a report and it's done. It's taken everybody that's in the games and it's now put them in my system. So if I go back now, you'll see that I now have games equals one, divisioning test, that's what we're doing. And if I go into person lookup and find people, you'll now see that I have more people available, right? So if I'm looking, um, then you see here, I this is by name. I can also do a quick lookup up here, just type the name Anthony. Oh, how did that work? Hold on a minute. Actually, don't know who's in the system, so let's just see here. Amy, if I typed Amy, we would have found it. There is no Anthony. Okay, so um, why is that not working? Try that one more time. That's really very strange. Oh. Sorry, my bad. OK, see up here. Uh, actually, this is a, a good mistake. This says exclude, not include, right? So if you can't find somebody, it's possible that they're not tagged correctly, right? What I'm going to do is I'm going to um, I'm going to say none and it'll search the entire database. So if I do aim now, it should still find it. Why can I not find this person? That is so, so strange. Huh. I do not know why that is happening. I'm going to have to find out. Um, I, yeah. Um, although I will notice one thing. You'll see that everybody in the system, so whoever created this, created people as A-H-O-D, which is not right. That's uh, head of delegation. So, so we want to actually make sure that all of these people are athletes, um, because otherwise they won't be available to us when we, uh, uh, when we go and, uh, and work with them. So, um, so again, you'll you'll notice that what I can actually do here is if I see everybody in the system, uh, criteria. Okay, so if I see everybody in the system, I can do that that weird thing where I select show checkboxes and select them all. So I can select as many people as I want to, um, and then. Uh, I, with selected people, I can do certain things, right? I can print reports. I can find out um, who they who they are all are, um, update or or even edit, right? Um, I think if I click edit here, um, yeah, it's showing me the, the violet and so on and so forth. So I can change their um, their status right across the board. Okay, so we do want to make sure that they're all um, they're all set to to athlete. 
Uh, I think I think we've done that in the game, so we'll we'll see that in a second. Okay. Um, I don't know why the quick lookup isn't working. I think I'm going to have to send a bug report in. The quick lookup should James, look up James, everything. Yeah. James, was there a first there a and last, last name difference? It shouldn't matter when you're click when you're quick looking. Here there is. Like if you're look, looking here, if I typed aim in here, it'll show me Amy. So there's Amanda. There's Amy. There's there's all of them. Um, but when you're quick, you're in, when you're in quick lookup, it's supposed to look across the entire system. So I don't know why that's that's not working. Um, I might there's there's something weird going on here that I don't entirely know. The, again, this is a new version um, that I haven't actually had a chance to play with, so it's possible it's a bug. Um, but you always have the option of searching by first name or last name, and that clearly is working. Okay. The other thing that you'll notice is that it's created the games itself. So in here um, under games, I can now click on that games and see all of the information about the games, which is where we're going to be working in a minute. Um, but just uh, just be aware that, that that's how you find um, that's how you find everybody within the games. OK, um, we're going to do one more import um, and before we go into games and start working there. So what, what I'm going to get you to do here is look under, uh, sorry, is, is, is realize that I'm missing the transfer option. And the reason I'm missing the transfer option is that I'm in this games, divisioning test. The only place you're going to see GMS transfer is in the home screen. So I got to go back one. To go back, I can either click back or I can just click here. So I'm going to click back and it'll pull me back to my home screen, which shows me my games, right? And down here I have the option for GMS transfer. So you remember, you have to be at the home screen in order to do that. Click on GMS transfer, and this time we're going to import the reports. Okay, and this is going to be um, super useful. So what I want you to do is I would like you to select um, the reports file that you just downloaded which actually should be uh, this one, I'm realizing. SOO reports-2019 is what it should say. Okay, select that and then click open. And what it's going to do is it's going to give you the same screen, but this time you'll notice it's a lot shorter. It's, it, it, it's strictly importing reports and it asks you which reports you want to import. This next step is important because otherwise you won't get any reports. You're going to drop that box down and again, Helena's trick of right clicking. So you don't have to click on all of these one by one because there's 66 of them. What I want you to do is just right click and choose all. And it will grab all of the reports. This has to say all, okay? It's gonna import only new or updated reports. So for some of you like uh, Bingo who have this thing running, it's only gonna update those reports. And then just click run. And it's gonna grab 52, uh, sorry, it's 52 reports, okay? Um, every year we release a report file, and when we do, we update these reports. So what will happen is, is that when you when you run the report importer, it will overwrite all of the previous reports so that you get the latest ones. All right. So you should have 52 some odd reports that have been created by um, by by staff and volunteers um, that you'll be able to use. Okay. Great. If you've done that, your system is now set. You're ready to go, um, and we can start working um, within within the games. Um, we're going to do two things here. There's divisioning test, and then there's um, to create a new games. I'm going to have all of you create your own games first, and then we're going to work in divisioning test because some of that stuff is already created. Okay. So the first thing we're going to do to create a games is you're going to click create new games. A games is your event. That's your competition. So whatever you do. It's going to happen within this this like environment here, okay? And um, and what you're going to what you're going to do now is you're just going to click next to begin, and it will walk you through all of the steps that you need in order to do this, okay? So it's dirt simple. We're going to give it the games a name. I'm going to call it James and Helena's Fun Games, okay? You don't need to choose a group. That's only if you want to organize your games. You you can give it a description. It's entirely up to you. It doesn't appear anywhere, um, but uh, that's just to help us like define what it is. So this is this is a training games. Um, it's applicable to all, all systems. And then you'll see here where it says delegations, right? You can choose which delegations are allowed to be chosen um, as part of this, like to be automatically created, or you can create them later. And so we're going to create them later. So we're just going to leave that alone. And then we're going to click next. And then you get the option of choosing your sport. Every sport 
in Special Olympics is listed here. Um, so it's easy to find uh, things um, to, to work with. If I click on, um, Helena, is our fun games going to be athletics? I think so, right? Yeah, sure, why not? But you've again, feel free to choose whatever you want. You have the option of clicking athletics, and I wouldn't recommend this, and you would get every single event ever included in athletics. Right. Um, the same thing will happen in swimming. It's in fact it's even worse than swimming because you get like the 50 meter float and things like that. Right. Or what you do is you pop open, you press the plus button, and then you select which events you want to use. So in this case, um, we are going to have the 100 meter run. Uh, we are going to have uh, the relay. Um, and what else, Helena? Should we do the, the maybe the long jump? Um, and I know Helena really likes the pentathlon, so I'm going to include, include the pentathlon. But when you include the pentathlon, I'm just warning you, you have to include all the events in the pentathlon or you're going to be trying to figure that out later. So like, try not to do that. OK, so great. So what's going to happen is, is it's going to create the games with all of these events. If you were running a multi-sport games, right? So say you were doing both athletics and swimming uh, for Diane, um, you might turn around and say, okay, well, I don't want all of the swimming events, but I would like um, the 100 meter breaststroke and the fly and the freestyle um, and whatever it is that those things happen to be. The benefit for doing it this way is that you don't have to re-jig anything. All of the settings are already set up for you. And that makes a big difference, okay? I'm gonna click next. Then it allows me to choose who I'm who is allowed to be in this game. So it says athletes, coach, or unified partner. Roles allowed in the event, none selected. So we're going to say that in an event, we want athletes to be there, but we want coaches to be able to register for the games because we want to keep track of them. Generally speaking, when you're running an event, we only type in the athletes, right? You know, but often if we were running a games, it would be athlete and unified partner would be the people allowed to be part of the event, right? How many times can a person be in this games? We usually say once. That doesn't mean that they can't be in more than one event. It just means that they can't register for two different sports within a games, right? If you are allowing that, you can change that, okay? You can change that particular restriction, um, but that's up to you. You can also set your minimum entrant age and your maximum entrant age, in which case it will, it will uh, work that out. If you set that as zero, there is none, right? Um, you can set your start date and your end date. That's, again, entirely up to you. Um, I'm going to say that our games is going to start today and it's going to end tomorrow. Um, and the effective date for calculating ages, that is important because it means that when you look at a competition like last year's competition, it will show you the, the age based on when the competition is. Okay. You don't need to select a primary location, but you can set up locations. If you're trying to schedule people into different fields, for example, you could set a set of locations up. That's under setup. I'm not going to cover that today, but it's it's pretty easy to do, and I can show you how to do it. Um, so you could have, if you're running soccer and you're doing bracketing, you could have like uh, five fields um, going. Um, if Diane somehow has three swimming pools running at the same time, she could have each of those three swimming pools going. She looked horrified by that 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 statement, so that that's reasonable. If we are using maximum effort, which is the old honest effort rule or the maximum performance rule, um, you can set what standard you want for that. I am going to set that for the moment just so that we can see what it does. Um, but most of the time we don't use that um, in local competition. OK, and then we're going to click next. You don't need to add an address, click next and the games are defined. And if we click finish, that's it. The games are in there and I clearly have don't know how to spell my own name. But other than that, it's working like great. OK, that entire process took me like 10 minutes to explain. It will take you about a minute and a half to actually do right. You know, so um, it's but once that pro that's set up, it's you're ready to go. That's the games. If I open up James and Helena's fun games, you'll see that there's a general delegation. So the delegations are not set up, as we said before, but you'll see that all of the events are in there. I've got all of Diane's swimming events and I've got all of Helena's um, track events and they're empty because we haven't registered anybody into the games. Does that make sense? Cool. All right. So there's your delegations, your your people. Um, we're going to deal with this on the other on the other side, but uh, for the moment, that's that's where we are. Okay. I'm going to stop for one second. Any questions? Nothing came Nothing up in the chat. Yeah. Chat, so unless so somebody, unless wants, somebody wants, wants to or something. Yeah. yeah. Chris would like kayaking to be the thing that I demonstrate it with. Um, I I'm all for it, Chris. I'm all for it. So it's good. Okay, um, but I'm going to move into, I'm going to ask you guys to go back. 
Um, and what I'm going to ask you to do is let's work in divisioning test because some of that information has already been entered, so we don't have to, to go back through it. So we're going to click on divisioning test. Um, and when you do, you're going to see a couple things. The first is, is that we have a, a team. Wow, we've set up a team. You don't have to have more than one team if you don't want to, but it's it's a good idea, right? You know, so like we're so we're going to work and we're going to create another team. Um, you'll see that we have our events uh, that are in athletics, um, which have been entered, and and you'll see here we we selected all of them, so they ended up all kind of coming through. Um, but in Alpine, we've got six entrants there. Um, but you're also going to see down here something called timing systems. Um, I think for the most part, you guys won't be dealing with this. Uh, if you do want to talk about this, I'm happy to chat with you about it. But if you are at a pool or at a track that has a finish link system, we do have one for the province that we can lend out as well. Um, you might have something like an Omega, um, uh, like quantum system at the pool or an Aries system at the pool or a Colorado system. Um, the, 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 the timing systems will work natively with GMS. You can actually plug it straight into GMS and get the times directly out of it. It is finicky. Um, it's not, we're not covering it today, but we can help you do that, okay? All right, when you're in a games, you can see all of the people in a games, you can register people in the games, um, and you'll. It's, it's very similar to what you saw before, okay? What I'm gonna ask you guys to do now is actually um, we're going to create a new team and then we're going to add one person to that team. OK, so so to create a team that the thing that we're going to do is we're going to start by selecting our delegations and we're going to add a new delegation. And remember when we said that there's that right click, you're going to click on delegations, right click, and you've got an option to say add new delegations. And this is what Helena was saying before. There are actually more options by right clicking than anything else. So when in doubt, either click it or right click it like you mean. When I click add new delegation, it is as simple as this. I'm just going to click next on the wizard. And I'm going to give that delegation a name, right? I can choose um, to group that delegation wherever it's, it wants. I can leave it blank um, as well. That's not an issue. Um, but if if I want the delegation to live at the central level, right, in general, I can do that. So anybody that I enter into the system will live at general. If I want to just leave a blank, I can do that too. Okay. Um, I'm going to choose the name of this team and it's going to be James's team uh, or James's dragons. Uh, feel free to name your team and then you're going to click next. And it's going to ask you, what are, are people allowed to be in this? Every role allowed in games. So remember, we said athlete, coach, and uh, unified partner are allowed in this game. So, so those will all be allowed. You can give it a language. You don't have to, um, but again, that's there. This is again. Remember that this is for managing a huge games. So sometimes when they get a delegation from um, Kenya, they might want to make sure that they've tagged off Swahili so that they can identify who the translators are going to be, and then click finish. That's it. Um, so now we've got James's dragons, but there's nobody in James's dragons. This is a, a serious problem for me. I have nobody on my team, and I really do want people on my team. So. I have a couple of options to add people. I can go up here under people. If, if I've got a big long list of registrants that I just want to be able to do, once I've created my de delegations, I could go in and register people in the games one by one, just the way we did it before. Okay. So again, you just, you fill it out, you create the new person and you go from there. I'm going to suggest to you, however, that it is probably easier, and Helena, check me if, if I'm wrong on this because um, you will have used this slightly differently than I would have. It is probably easier to create your delegation, then go into your delegation and add your people here because you, it's very rare that you'll make a mistake if you do it this way. Once you've got, you're in James's Dragons or in your team, to add an entrant, all you do is click on this button on the left, right? So in this case, I'm gonna choose athlete I'm going to say next, and I'm going to try to add um, an athlete to the games. So the person I'm going to add is me. So I'm going to add myself to the games. There were nobody that met my criteria. So it's search to check to see if, if, if I'm there. There's nobody there. So I'm going to click create a new person. And it allows me to create a person in this games. And you see up here, person type, make sure you select athlete. That's super important. I don't know why. I mean, I know why it happens, but they shouldn't put that up there. OK, we're going to choose gender. I'm going to give you my date of birth. OK, and then we're going to click continue. Um, oh, I have to select a group, so we're going to choose general. 
and then click continue. OK, and it's added me to the system, but more importantly, it's added me to James's Dragons and it's put me um, in the system. OK, there's one other thing that you can do here, which is why I often suggest doing it this way, is that when you're registering people for the games, you also can register them into events straight away. And so, um, and this is actually a fast way of doing that. So we know the person's type, they've been entered, the date of birth's been entered. All I have to do is click next and you'll see that it, it confirms my role, right? So I can click next, but now it allows me to add them into an event. Usually you only have one sport, so it's really easy. But if I were going into athletics, it would allow me to really quickly choose the event that I'm gonna be part of, or even just type in the event code. So if I go, um, I'm gonna be running uh, the 100 meter run, I'm gonna do the 25 meter walk, and I'm going to do, uh, I guess it doesn't matter, I'm gonna do the relay, okay. Um, what you will also notice, however, is that if I clicked add another event and try to add another sport, this particular game is set up so that I can only enter in one sport, right? And it would flag it for me, be like, you can't, can't do that. There can't be more than one spot. You could set it to allow it, and then that would be fine. The advantage of doing it this way is that it also allows me to enter their qualifying times straight away. So if I punch in their qualifying time here, um, so I ran the 100 meter in a minute and 32 seconds, um, I can do that. And I'm going to show you a quick, fast way of, of entering in times. For the for the division between the times, you see the, um, what do you call it, the, the colon, you don't have to select colon. It's actually a lot faster to use the number key and just put a period in. So I'm going to go one minute, 32 seconds, zero milliseconds, right? It'll give me, um, it'll, it'll translate that into a qualifying score of one minute, 32 seconds, and zero milliseconds. Um, hang on, I'm going to remove the relay because it's more trouble than it's worth. OK, then um, if if I wanted to say that I ran the 100 meter in an hour, I can go one hour, uh, one minute and 32 seconds and that's uh, right, 32 seconds and 32 milliseconds, and it will do the same thing. There's one hour, one minute, 32 seconds and 32 milliseconds. Please try not to judge how fast I run the 100 meter. Um, it's a it's a terrible thing. OK, so for the moment, I'm going to say 32 minutes and 23 seconds. That's good. Um, you don't have to select personal best, but but if you do select a personal best in there, what's cool about it is, is that it'll keep track of it. So for those of you who are running teams, you could use GMS, put all of your people into GMS and keep a running track of their personal bests because it will automatically figure that out as you go, uh, which is great because when you're coming into a new event, you could send your um, your registration straight to Helena or to whoever it's that's running the event. They import the registrations. When they get the results, they push the results back to you just in one of those import files that I just showed you. You import the file, and the next thing you know, you have all of the data for your um, for your team whenever you want it, right? Um, that's which is exciting, right? You know, so you can kind of keep that going. Okay, 25 meter walk. Uh, I did that faster. Um, and then that's entered. OK, so you'll see that I've got my times in there and then um, I click next. That that procedure for entering times is the same throughout the system. OK, so it, that's how you're going to do it. OK, I can run the wizard again if I want to add people over and over and over again. So that's one quick way of doing it and it'll just keep cycling. I'm going to stop there, though, and I'm just going to click finish. And there you'll see that I now have a team member and I'm on the team. OK. And if I go back, you'll also see that um, Brampton has 23 people. Now, here's an interesting thing. You'll notice my age is not my current age, and it's because this games, the date for the games is actually set to three years ago, which is when we, we created this, this test database. So um, so it will calculate the age based on when they, like on the date of the event. Okay, so that's good. All right, um, any questions about that? That's how you add people to a games. OK, I, pr I promise I will have the rest of this done fairly shortly. I'm sorry, we're, we've gone way over. I did do a budget for that. OK. Um, we're now going to go into events, all right? And this is the, um, the next piece. When you open an event, you're just going to click on events down here. And you can see all of the events that have entrance in it. OK, so if I click here on the 100 meter run, it's going to open that event and we're going to see all of the people that are in um, the 100 meter run. And you'll notice that they've put me in the 100 meter run because I registered myself for it. OK, 
Um, I'm going to go back one though and show you one other thing. And this is true for every event. If I right click on the 100 meter run, I also have the ability to edit or set up or, or even print reports for the specific event, however I want to. I can even add an event if I want to just by right clicking. Oh, you know, I forgot um, Helena. I know Helena really wanted the 100 meter hurdles. I can select the 100 meter hurdles and add them into the into the system, right? You know, so it's it's pretty easy to grab things from the system. The other thing that you can do is under setup is you can define this event. That is different than edit this event. Edit this event will open the event, right? Setup will allow you to make changes to the event. And in here, you have a whole bunch of different options. These options are important. And so what I would suggest to you is that after you've created your games and added in your events, go through each event and just click on setup and define the event to make sure that the settings work for you, okay? Because you can modify things to, to make it work. Examples, if I drop down this list of event features, I can use lanes, right? Or not use lanes. I can use multi-part scores if I'm doing um, uh, like shot put, for example, and I want three scores and I want to average them, or I can select not to use that. Um, I can capitalize the division names. This is where I activate a timing system. So if I want to use a timing system and I tick that off, it'll give me options for a timing system down there, right? Um, I'm going to turn that off though for right now. It also allows you to create rounds. So if you were doing divisioning, right, you know, and I have a preliminary round, I've got a qualifying round, I have round one and I have final, I have the option to be able to do that. If, however, I wanted to run this as timed as a timed final, I can, I don't have to do this, but I can change this. I can say timed and I can change the round name to timed and I can make this timed so that when I look at it, it makes sense on a report. Like this is what I timed it at. And then here are your final results and I can quickly copy information backwards and forwards. OK, you can also have multiple rounds if for whatever reason you were you're having more than two rounds. That's very rare, but um, you can change that. Or if we only wanted to have the one round, I could change it to one round and it'll make it just the qualifying time and the final. OK, so it's, it's just an easy way to control what it is that you're seeing. You can choose who gets medals and when. Um, and then this is probably the most important part. You've got the default settings for what the age groups are within the system, but you probably want to change that for your competition because you may not have all of those age groups. And to change that, you just press the three dots and you'll see here that I can modify which age groups I'm working with just by editing them. If I change the top age group to, to eight, that's gonna be the first one. If I change the next age group, I don't know if I made this 14, you're gonna watch what happens there. This one becomes eight to 13. This one becomes 14 to 15. So you really are just punching in what the next age group's gonna be and it'll keep going. And when you get to the last one, it'll be 30 plus, right? So I'm gonna um, set an age group here back to 12 to 15, okay? I'm still 30 plus. If I decided that I wanted a 40 plus category, I just add 40 and then it'll go 30 to 39, 40 plus, okay? Um, good. Again, you've got your dates for calculating ages. If this is blank, it'll just use the um, the main date. The other thing that I would probably suggest to you is give things an event number. And the reason for doing that is that if you're running a track competition or a swim competition and you want to put them in order really quickly, giving them an event number allows you to sort by event number so you can see everything in the right order. OK, so I'm going to give that number one and you'll see what that looks like in a second. And then that's it. OK, so again, you have options. But you'll see here that I've got a number one here. If I gave uh, the wheelchair race number two, I can now sort by this column. Um, of course, they're all zero. And you'll see that they go in order, right? So I can quickly find um, events in the order in which they are. OK, cool. Um, Duncan just asked a question, right? If there are no PBs set for an athlete, will GMS start tracking and or updating? Um, that's a good question. I don't know what's happened in this version. The answer is, is that they're supposed to be tracked automatically, but, um, for like up until now, you've had to put them in, like you've had to select that it's a personal best just in case a mistake was made. You don't want to clear the previous personal best, but it's pretty easy to do. You can just select the personal best from a list and just grab it. Right. So that's, um, easy to do. Okay. 
And yes, the event numbering tip will save you a ton of time. Uh, for anybody who's had to scroll through the list to find what the next event is, uh, yeah, believe me, that, that's just a ton of time. OK, um, I'm actually going to sort by counts just because so that we can see it. So these are the events that have registrations in them. But that's uh, that's how you define an event. Now we're going to work inside an event. So I'm going to take the 100 meter run um, and you should be able to take the 100 meter run as well. And you'll see here that we have some options, right? Like, you know, you're you're seeing all of the people within the event. You're seeing their preliminary score, their final score, and you'll see what round we happen to be in. OK, um, we were going to work actually in the first round, in the preliminary round. So I'm going to switch this to preliminary. And it is important that you know which round you're working in because different rounds work slightly differently, right? You'll see here that we've actually entered in qualifying scores for the 100 meter run. And the reason that we entered in the qualifying scores is so that we could do divisioning. And I'm actually going to clear the divisioning for a sec because I um, just want to show you how this works. Divisioning is the be all or end all for GMS. OK, it is actually the thing that makes our life a lot easier because what it does is it applies the Special Olympics divisioning rules for that particular sport automatically. So you don't have to break out a pencil and paper or deal with a spreadsheet or all of the rest of it. If I was divisioning in a preliminary to final, right, the first thing I'm going to do is division the preliminary round. OK, and so what I'm going to do for divisioning here is and there is a cheat sheet for divisioning that will walk you through this as well. Is I'm going to take all of my people and make sure they all have qualifying scores, which were the things that we entered a registration. OK, and then to division, I'm going to select this this button over here at the bottom left, which says divisioning. When I select divisioning. It pops me to the screen and it shows me all of the people on the right. I can choose to division manually if I want to, or I can choose to auto division and then adjust things manually, which is what I'm going to tell you to do. OK, and what you're going to do here is you're just going to click auto division wizard up here at the top. So I'm going to click auto division. And it asks me how I want to division everybody. So this time I'm going to division everybody in the games, but it's possible that you've divisioned everybody and you've got one person that isn't division. So you could also choose division only males, only females, only people who have identified as other, whatever it happens to be. You can choose what it, what it is that you want to do. OK, and then I'm going to or I can also choose to ignore entrants which already have divisions so that I'm not redivisioning people every single time. OK, I'm going to choose all entrants. I'm going to click next. Then it asks me the maximum number of entrants per division. Be amazed at how many times this gets messed up. In case you were wondering, the maximum number of entrants per division is the number of lanes on the track or the number of lanes on the pool. There is nothing worse than showing up with a GMS divisioning sheet for lane eight and discovering that there's only four lanes in the swimming pool, right? Uh, that poses a problem, right? So like, so what you're going to want to do is set that to whatever it is. I would generally suggest that if you do that um, for things like shot put and stuff like that, where there are no lanes, we usually set Helena what? It's like a minimum of eight, right? In that division. Yeah. 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 And just select eight. You can also set the maximum percentage difference between entrance scores in a division. This is actually, it will default to 15. It's usually 25, right? You know, so it's, there's a, and all that means is that there's a 25% difference between the middle of a bracket to the next bracket, right? You know, um, which is roughly 25% across an entire bracket. Um, it's, uh, you will notice a couple of variances there, but what it will try to do then is to place people accordingly. And you choose which score they can division based on. And we're going to say that we're divisioning by qualifying score because this is the preliminary level, right? Um, again, we're going to division for each gender. Um, you can choose how you want to division other and new division for each age group. And then you're going to click next. That's it. You'll see here that there's a starting division number. You can put your prefix on these divisions. We usually put a prefix division name with a gender code um, at the moment because usually that's how they, they do. You don't need to do that. You can unclick that if you want. Um, and then finally, and we almost never prefix with age groups because it's just more trouble than it's worth. OK, and then if you click next, what will happen is it'll tell you what it is that you want and you click finish and there you go. All of your divisions have been created. Now, again, it took me about 10 minutes to explain that it 
will take you about 30 seconds to do that, right? Like, do you mean divisioning is something that you will do repeatedly over and over and over again. And if there is one thing that I ask you to practice, it's this. It is extremely easy to use, but you just have to kind of go in and work with it, okay? Now, do you see up here? This now shows me what my divisions are. So in F1, I have one person, right? In F2, I've got three. In F4, I've got two. In F3, I've got one. In M1, I've got me. Um, and, and what you'll have discovered, essentially, is that these divisions, these ones don't look that bad. These ones are obviously very unequal because you don't want them having to run by themselves, right? You know, or you might just say, hey, listen, like in this particular competition, I think these two could be pretty close together. The only reason they've div been divisioned out is by age. You can see that right here. So if you want to change the division, it's really simple. You click on the division that you want to, to grab the person from, you take Anna, and you just pop them into F2. And they've been redivisioned, right? Um, I can do the same thing with Beth. Um, I'm kind of standing up there on my own, so we're just going to leave that alone for a second. And once you've done that, you'll notice that your division numbers don't make a lot of sense. So to fix that, there's this button over here that says compress divisions. And so I'm just going to compress the divisions. It will ask me the question how I want to compress them. I click save and it merges all of them together. And now I have three, like four, pe four person divisions. Cool. That makes sense. Any questions? Yes. Yes, I will show people how the time division works in a second. OK, we'll do it with preliminary first and then um, that'll make things easier and then you can kind of go from there. All right. The last thing you need to know in divisioning is this. And this is actually the, the easiest part. Assign and erase lanes. If you if you were assigning people to um, the pool, I might choose all divisions um, and then choose pyramid best in the center. If I do that, it's going to it's going to sort them according to the lanes. Now, remember when we talked about the wheelchair? Um, setting. If I set the wheelchair setting, what it will actually do is it'll make sure that that person ends up on the outside regardless of the best in the center. OK, and regardless of whether or not it's a four person race, if there's an eight lane pool, it'll make sure that they're assigned to one or eight. OK, so that's uh, one of the ways that that works. We're going to assign lanes to the divisions. Um, we're going to say that it's eight maximum. We can click assign. The other thing that you can do is best to worst or worst to best, which is what you would use for track, right? Lena? Best to worst, I think. Early, early. Okay. I, I guess it depends on the race, right? Yeah. So, um, but you you do have other options. You can also choose random. Um, but we're going to choose pyramid for a second, and I'm just going to click assign. And you'll see that it's automatically assigned lanes to each of those people, um, and they're they're done. Okay. Cool. Now, if I come back out, you'll see that I've got my events, right? I've got my preliminary lane assignments. And I've got scores that need to go in there. So now what I need, I need heat sheets. Oh my goodness, I need to create heat sheets for, the, for this event. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to go down here to reports and click heat sheets. OK, and um, I'm going to want to save my changes before I print. That's important. If it asks you to save your changes, make sure you do. And we're going to end up on the reporting screen. Now, um, by showing you the reporting screen now, I'm going to simplify the process later. Um, uh, but but the reporting screen is going to be the same no matter where you are. The only difference is going to be which reports you see. So if I select heat sheets, it's only going to show me the heat sheet reports. If I select results, it's only going to show me the results reports. If I'm in um, a uh, name tag sheet, it's only going to show me the name tag sheet. So, so that's the thing that you need to know. What I'm also going to tell you is don't worry about finding your sport in here. I mean, you can if you want to, but don't, because the easiest way to do this is to scroll down to the bottom and find the section for SO reports. Remember when we were talking about the, um, the, the, the reports that we imported? These are those 52 reports. It doesn't look like 52 reports here because these are just the heat sheets that are in that report. And you're going to see that we have lots of different options for how those heat sheets get created. Right, we can create. We've got recording sheets for athletics to make it really easy to find um, to do shot put, for example. We have condensed heat sheets, which for swimming you've seen a thousand times. Those are the the ones that have the things across the top, and I'm going to show you how that that one works. We've got ones for timing systems. 
We've got ones for individual reports with, with NPR. We've got lane recorder sheets. If you're just using lanes for swimming, you can give a, a specific recording sheet for each lane. These are these are just the easiest ways of grabbing um, the sheets. You can find them. I'm not going to go through them all. Um, you can go and click on them once you've created an event and see what they do. But you'll also notice that we've put some instructions in them that tell you what all these reports do. Those instructions do not exist anywhere else in the system. So trust me, stay under SO reports. Um, that's, that's where we are. Um, I'm going to choose condensed heat sheets because I actually think it's probably the heat sheet that you will end up using the most. Um, and I think that's probably true across the board, right? It's, it's, it's a very compact report. So I'm going to choose condensed heat sheets here. Um, and I'm going to click select. And it'll open up my report and you'll see that it's already filled out everything that I want. It's chosen preliminary report. It's done all of this stuff. It's chosen by schedule and I'm just going to click print. And when I do that, you will see, I'm just going to zoom in on this here a little bit, that it's created a report that's really easy to deal with, right? Here's the event. Here are the people. This is what's happening in this particular event. Here are the people that are on the lane, right? There's James by himself running the 132 seconds, right? Um, does this make sense? Okay. Uh, you'll see the, the, the thing up here at the top. Um, and this will show you every division sorted uh, alphabetically in the system. Uh, sorry, in in this event in the sport. Okay, I'm going to show you how to grab multiples later, but but that's essentially the way it works. Okay. If um, just for argument's sake here, I'll show you one other. Uh, there is for 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 sports that use time cards. This would be another example where reports been created. And if you're using um, like a timer in a pool where you used to have those those cards, you know what I'm talking about, those things, you can actually create the cards directly on here and just cut them um, and then use them. If you were doing uh, timing using stopwatch timers, this would be one way of grabbing it pretty quickly, right? You know, so there's lots of different things. We've got infraction rules and, and things like that, okay? So those are your reports. That's how you generate your heat sheet, okay, good? Your reports work the same way every single time. So now what I'm going to ask you to do is this. What I want you to do now is enter the scores. There are two ways of entering in results. I can choose results entry here, um, go division by division, and you'll notice that there's barred lines. It'll show it exactly the way it is on your report. And again, you're just going to type it in. So in this particular case, I'm going to say 23, 32, um, 12, 15, 26, 75, so on and so forth, okay? And then I can move to the next division just by, by clicking the next division and going through. Your arrow keys and number keys on your keyboard will make this job a lot easier. You can just keep moving around and then clicking and, and entering the stuff in. Um, okay, a lot of you have done this stuff before. The other way that you can, you can um, deal with your reporting or, or entering your results would be to sort. If you're getting your results in alphabetically, for example, you could sort your results alph alphabetically and then come in here and, and type in your numbers again, right? Right, and so on and so forth, okay? Um, lastly, another option is that you can use the sort feature down here on the left and sort it however you want. So if I wanted to sort, again, by preliminary division and preliminary lane, it's going to sort everybody by division and lane, and then I can enter them in exactly the way I get them on a big sheet of paper just by going through. So what I'm going to ask you to do right now is just to enter in a bunch of data under preliminary um, score, um, and we're going to race. So here we go. Uh, sorry, I'm going to enter in some time here. Uh, So what I've done is I've entered in um, information, and this is the preliminary score, okay? And so we've done our preliminary round, and now what we want to do is we want to go and do our final round. Well, that's super easy. Once all of the results are entered in, I could print my results for the prim pr preliminary round, which is pretty simple. I just click results. Um, I'm going to save my changes. And then I can choose, once again, go down here, and you'll see my reports have changed, and I can choose my preliminary round results with qualifier. If I click that, literally all I have to do is click print, and it'll show me all of the results in that sport by event with my preliminary score. So that becomes the thing that you post on the wall for the first round, right? 
Um, what I'm going to do, though, is I want to now move to the second round, right? What's going to happen for my final round? So I'm going to change the round up here at the top to final, right? And I'm going to do my divisioning all over again, except this time you'll see I have preliminary scores that have been ca calculated from the beginning. I'm going to choose um, uh, divisioning. Again, you'll see up here it says final. All of my people are, are in here and ready to be divisioned again, and I'm going to do the exact same thing I did before. I choose my auto division wizard, all entrants. Uh, again, I'm not going to belabor this point because uh, we've done it, but here's the pool. It's got eight spots or the track. It's already set to 25 from before, but this time the score to use is going to be the preliminary score. That's what it's going to do for my final, right? And then finally, I'm going to click next. And it's going to run my divisions exactly the way it did before. And again, I have my divisions set up actually very similarly to the ones that I did before, right? So I can choose to recompress them, but maybe for the final, just for the argument's sake, we're going to leave this alone. We're going to leave it by itself. So now, because it's possible that people will change, right? Now I've got um, my divisions for, for final. There's my final divisions. But you'll notice, oops, I forgot to assign the lane. Not a problem. Down here on the left, I can go back and assign my lanes. I pick the same options that I did before. Click assign, and there we go. I've got all of my lanes assigned over there, right? Down here at the bottom, you'll notice that it's still sorting by preliminary division, and I, won't, I don't want to do that. I would like to sort by final division. So I'm going to select sort one by final division, and I'm going to choose by final lane. But I'm also going to add something else in here, too. Before all of these, these I'm actually going to choose place, not because we have a place yet, but because we will eventually. And when we when we want to be able to look at this sheet, we we'll want to see that. So I'm going to say final division and then final lane. And so what will happen is, is that when we get placement, it'll show up here. OK, OK, I'm going to stop there because this like truthfully, this is exactly the same as the first round. But I'm going to ask you for any questions before I do the final results and then you'll you'll see kind of how this works. Nope. OK. OK, so we're going to do the exact same thing. This time we're going to do it just as fast or possibly even faster. We're going to enter in our results using um, the results entry, which was down there on the left. Or again, you can choose to enter your results um, at the uh, uh, just on the main screen. But for the moment, I'm going to enter the first one in here. And Anna um, did this in 1.15.32. OK, um, and then in division two, I think these were all one minutes, right? So I'm going to set one of them to be really low. OK, and you're going to see something interesting here. 1.23 um, and 1.62. OK, and for the final round, it actually makes sense to use um, entry this way. And I'm going to show you why, because no matter how you enter it, you have to do placement, OK? And placement is important. And you can do it at the same time as what I'm doing right here. But um, I'm just entering all the results in first. OK. OK, so now what I want you to do is, is look up here. So there's only one person in this division. There's no maximum per effort difference. This is probably almost the same thing. All you do to calculate places is click Calculate Places, OK? Often in a single person division, correct me if I'm wrong, um, Helena, but when you're when you're competing against your own time because you've had a preliminary, the 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 differences are based on um, the mechanics, right? So uh, I'm blanking here, Helena, but I think it's like 10 percent. Twenty five. Yeah. 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 So currently, currently um, and if people are interested, people are interested in going to be changed, you change. You beat your time, your time. Your to 10% slower is second, 10 to 25 is third, 25% or more slower than your preliminary time at that event is a four. Right. Okay. So if you beat your preliminary time, you're going to get a first place. If you didn't beat your preliminary time, um, then you're in, you're within 10% and you're second. If you're between 10 and 25, you're third. If you're beyond 25, you're fourth, right? That's generally how it works. For the most part, you guys aren't dealing with that, um, at, like because you're not doing prelims, but if you are, that's just a, a way to, to keep track of it, okay? The other um, the the other option here um, is, is this situation where you've got more than one person in an event. 
Um, and if I clicked calculate places, it's going to calculate those places, right? But you'll see here, I can DQ maximum effort violations. So if I click DQ there, it's going to DQ Susie Toe because she hit the maximum effort um, rule. We had set the maximum effort rule to be 15%, and her maximum effort difference was 57. She beat her own time by 57, so she shouldn't have been in that division at all. Usually when we DQ somebody there, we actually just redivision them. We move them into another division, right? You know, um, the division that they should have been in. Um, but in this case, I'm going to say, oh, you know what? I messed up. I entered that in wrong. It should have been that, right? And if I do that, there is no, there is no DQ. So I'm going to click calculate places and it will calculate the places. Oh, sorry, I better clear that. The way I can. Got to drop up to the very top. OK, now I should be able to do it. Calculate places. There she goes. She got a first, second, and third place. Um, I'm going to do this for each of the other ones and just do it pretty quickly. So I'm going to click Calculate Places. And you'll see these guys were all flagged. And sometimes, James, um, at a provincial qualifier, we won't yeah. uh, eliminate an athlete or disqualify them or change them. Um, we'll, we'll let well, you know in the tech package ahead of time. But correct. Or even at an invitational, coaches might like to know if their athlete is being inconsistent. Yes. And so this can be, a, we can still keep the flag there, but it doesn't affect them. So it's still yeah, a handy it's, tool. Yeah, it's a, it's a very handy tool. You can see that when you're printing out the results, you can actually print out a set of results for all of the coaches and they'll be able to get all of that. Uh, and you can choose to show it. Okay, now watch what's happened. Because we did it that way, you will see that we now have a placement field over here. And because we sorted by place, it's now going to sort. Um, oh, shoot, I did that in the wrong spot. It should have been final division first. My place. That fell in. OK, sorry. Sorry, again, resort. Uh, you will see that there they are sorted by division. There's their placement. We're good to go. OK. And once again, to print the results for this, it's really simple. You just click results. Save your changes. Um, and again, you can post them right on the wall. Everything is already filled out for you. Um, I can choose which event results report I want to do. So again, I'm going to choose, I'm going to load the report. I'm going to find the report that I want. In this case, it's final round results with previous round because we had a preliminary round. So I'm going to choose that, click select, and then click print. And you will see, oh, hmm, that's awkward. Okay. Um, I'll have to remind you to take out the Sault Ste. Marie thing. I'll show you how to do that later. Okay, but but regardless, the um, you'll see here, you can see everybody that has competed, right? What their previous score results were, how many people were in the division. Um, and you'll even see, I think, yep, you'll even see down here in divisions that have more than thing, what the average difference was in terms of time. So it gives people like good results that you can kind of work with, okay? Um, and results. I would encourage you to play with the different reports till you find the reports that you would like to use. Okay, and that's um, and that's that's pretty important. Okay. All right. Um, I think that's good. I'm gonna go back. Um. Okay. That's really it for um for results entry and for events. That's how you deal with an event. I'm gonna show you one other tool that is extremely powerful. Um, and that I use all the time, um, and I would encourage you to do the same. And that is that when you're flipping back and forth between rounds, you're going to notice that things change, like up top. So I'm going to start in the preliminary round here. You're also going to notice that there's information in here that you need or don't need, or like, you know what, like James, like I'd really like to know which delegation Anna's in, because if I need to find her on a pool deck, I need to know that they're part of the Brampton Panthers. That's absolutely true, right? Um, so what you're going to see up here at the top are all these fields. If you right click up at the top, you can choose what you want to see. And I'm going to tell you up front that there are a few things that I almost always make myself available for. I always want to know their name, their gender. Sometimes I will select the box that says wheelchair or handicapped access if I want to know who is uh, who's in need of that, right? Like that support. Um, if you had different types, you could choose that, but most of the time it's athletes, so that's okay. But if you were using athletes or unified partner, you could stick that in there. I always, always select delegation and age. I don't really like age group is helpful because that tells me if I'm divisioning by age group, 
but it's not always the most important thing. Sometimes I need to know where they're at, right? So for the, for the preliminary round, this is often the information that I need at any given moment. And then I can reorganize them. So I only need this wheelchair thing at the very, very end, right? So I just plunk it back there so I can see it really quickly. Um, and, I, and I usually, I can make it smaller because I know that that's what that means, right? You know? And any comments I want to put in, if you want, if you have comments that are attached to the athlete that you need to know or disqualification requirements or things like that, you can stick that in there. I start with name. Um, I often put uh, delegation right after name just to make that easier. And actually, I usually put bib at the very top, right? Uh, you can set people's bib numbers um, and you can get it to auto calculate that. But if you were doing track, bib comes in really handy when you're trying to locate somebody, right? Then you've got gender. I've got my age. I've got my age group. I've got a preliminary round, I've got my qualifying score, and then I've got my preliminary division and I move my preliminary lane there so I can say, okay, they're in division and they're in lane one. Great, I know where these people are. There's my score, that's where I need to stick it in, and then there's my, D, my DQ parameter, okay? This is probably gonna be the view that I want for all of my events. You can decide how you want your view to look, I'm also going to set my sort parameter down here at the bottom. I usually, at a preliminary, I division by division, I division by lane, and if I don't know that information, I division by name, okay? And I resort. Okay, and then here's the powerful part. I can click here to click Save View. And again, I would encourage you to play around with this a little bit. And I'm going to call this view name the prelim view and click OK. Okay, so that's great. So I've got save view there. I can now do whatever I want, and that view is always saved. I can all I can come back here and sort by qualifying score. I can go, oh, you know what? I need to know everybody that's in that delegation. I can go that, and I'm like, oh wait, ugh. You know what? I need to get back to the way I had it before. If I click change view, I can now select prelim view and revert it back to the way I wanted it. Okay. Now here's the best part because you don't want to have to do that in every event, which is what we used to have to do. You can choose this button here called Replicate View. And if this is the view that I want for all of my prelim rounds, I'm going to click Replicate View, Replicate Prelim View, and you'll get a box that looks like this. And you can choose all of the events that this view applies to. And in this case, I'm going to say everything in athletics. It might not be everything in athletics. It could be shot put. You might want something different. And that's fine. And then I'm going to click OK. And that's going to make that view available to me in every event just by clicking change view. So if I come back here now and I go to the 25 meter walk, I can click change view and select prelim view and it will set it and I don't have to do it again. Okay. Um, usually what I will do is I will take that view then and, and switch to the next round and create a view for the final round that looks similar. So I'm going to go to final round, click prelim view, but this time I want something different. I don't need the qualifying score this time. This time I want the prelim score, right? So I'm going to keep that. I need the preliminary division. I need the preliminary lane. But actually, I don't, right? Because we don't care about that anymore. What we do care about is the final division, the final score, and the final lane, and the placement. And I'm going to get rid of DQ preliminary, right? And now I've got something that looks very similar to what we were dealing with before. But this time, this is the final view. So I'm going to click Save View. I'm going to save this one as my finals view. Click OK. Replicate it. Oh, sorry. I also want to change the sort down here at the bottom. And so we're going to do final div, uh, place, final, oops, final lane, uh, sort, name, and then click. Save my view. Okay, and then I'm going to replicate this across all of them, and it is now available to everybody in athletics, and I don't have to do that again. And that makes your life a ton easier because what you're seeing on the screen is exactly what it is that you're seeing elsewhere. Cool? All right, that is it for events. Because we've already done reports, the only thing that I'm going to show you now is how to grab some of the more specific reports because finding reports is actually really simple. So again, you've got your heat sheet. Yes, yes. James, sorry. Um, Duncan did ask about going straight to finals. Is oh, that sure. Do you yes. want to cover here the concept yeah. that's important too? Yeah. 
Okay, so here's here's how I'm going to tell you to do straight to final, and it works this way um, uh, pretty much every single time, right? Okay, so I'm going to pretend I'm actually going to come out here, and Duncan, if it's okay, I'm going to pretend this this hundred meter run is straight to final. I'm going to change the setup. So so again, in the definition for straight to final, I'm just going to change the round name. So um, I'm uh, it, you don't have to do this, but it just for me it makes it easier. I'm just going to put timed and time there, right? And so all that does is it makes it easier for me to see what's going on, okay? That's the only thing you have to do to deal with straight to final, okay? And I'm gonna click save. If I go into my 100 meter run now, um, you're gonna see that I now have an option for the timed category, right? And so for straight to final, what we do is we division by, uh, what do you call it? We division by uh, qualifying score, just like the way we did it um, a second ago. Hang on a second, okay. Um, I'm going to actually save this view as a timed view as well. Okay, so we division straight using qualifying score. It gives us our timings and our times, uh, like our time scores. So there, I've done it there. Um, but then what you're going to do is you're going to pretend that you've got a final round, but you're going to use the exact same scores. Does that make sense? So in this case, the time scores are going to become the final scores. So I'm going to come down here because we use our original divisions. I'm going to go to final and um, Duncan, just pretend that these these don't exist. OK, but the um, but we're going to just pretend that we we haven't done placement. OK, um, I, it's going to take me too long to, to clear it. But we're just going to pretend that. So the time scores need to be what's in this spot here, right? They, they're what like if we zero all of these out, right? That's what um, that's what it would look like. Right, but we we wouldn't have a division and we wouldn't have the final score. We've just got the, the stuff that we timed. So what we're going to do to do this is we're going to click on divisioning again. Okay, um, sorry. Before we click on divisioning, we're going to move the scores from the time score field to the final score field. There's two ways of doing that. You could just type them in if you wanted to, like manually, right? Um, but that sometimes causes what I just did, which is we, you make mistakes or what you can do is you can click import scores. This is the one thing you do differently. Click import scores, and you're going to import the scores from one column to the next column. So in this case, the source is this games. The source event is the 100 meter. And I want to take what was in the timed score, and I want to put it in the final score. So it's just going to copy it over. That's all it's going to do, right? If you want to, sometimes just that so we've got it on recorded, I take the time lane and I put it in the final lane, right? That's really the only thing that you need to do. Okay, those two things get moved over. Um, if there was a DQ, sometimes the DQ is in DQ timed. You can put the DQ in place as well. Um, but if there's no DQ, it'll just overwrite. And then you've got overwrite existing values. You have to untick this box down here that says test mode. And then you click import. And we do have a cheat sheet for this, just so you know. Okay. What you'll see here is that what it's doing is, is that it's grabbing the, 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 the number and pushing it over to the other side. So when I close this, um, when I go back, you'll see that it's grabbed all of my times and it's put it into the other spot and it's, it's picked up the lane that they would have um, participated in. Now, if I division, right, um, I'm gonna get the divisions based on the previous round, right? So again, we're divisioning all entrants. It's the exact same thing. We're divisioning on time, except you'll see that the score field we're using is time score. It does the divisions. And when I come back out, these are my new divisions using the time score with my final, final score. All I have to do now is go to results entry, and I don't even have to enter results because it's already grabbed them, and I just calculate places. So I go to each one and click calculate place, calculate place, calculate place, calculate place. And we're done. Does that make sense, Duncan? The only other thing that you really need to know about about um, direct to final is that we have a report that's specific for direct to final because otherwise you, um, it looks weird. And the specific report for direct to final for results entry is um, oops, sorry, hang on a second. Is creatively named. Final round of results, direct to final with qualifying time <laughs> for posting, OK? And the only difference between that is, is that it shows the qualifying time instead of showing 
the preliminary time. So the preliminary time and the final time would be the same in a timed final, and, and that's useless to people, right? But if you click this one, it'll actually show you the direct to final results. You can actually see it right here. There's their previous score um, and their time final. Right? Oh. Oh, I didn't select it. What happened there? Huh. I don't know what happened there. That's a bug. Somebody remind me about that, Helena. Um, that needs to be fixed. That's a bug for sure. We'll fix that and then you, you won't have that problem. So that's good. Okay. Um, Uh, okay, that's it. Cool. Um, okay, so let's. I'm going to go. This is the last piece right here is reports. You can do the reports within an event. If you do the reports within an event, it will automatically filter for that event. 90 times out of 10, that's exactly the report that you want. It's an easy thing to do, not a big issue. But, um, and Diane, sorry I'm picking on you. You're just, you're the person I'm seeing on the screen right now. So, like, um, but in a swim meet, you don't want to have to go through and print each of these reports one at a time for every heat sheet. That will drive you crazy. You can actually print reports and results in full packs if you want to by, by just clicking on reports right here. When you click reports here, you're going to see that you have all of the results for all of the different reports across the entire system. So for example, we have bib reports that allow you to print whose bibs go where. Um, we have advanced reports that allow you to print delegation reports. Um, and we've got summary cross tabs that if you ever wanted to do a calculation of advancement, that's how we do it. Um, and we also have like, so who's got which uh, medals. We actually can do a medal report off of the cross tab as well, which will tell you how many medals you might need. Um, and then you'll you'll see uh, your games reports. These are exceptionally good, which allow you to print out um, a pack for each coach so that they can see what the results were for that particular coach. As an example for event res results reports or event heat sheets, I'm just going to show you what happens if we want to get the heat sheets for the whole games, right? And again, I'm I'm kind of pointing at, at swimming and track and kayak and things like that. If you wanted to get all of your heat sheets after setting up the games, you can go into heat sheets. And again, you'll see you have all of the options, but now you've got down here the ability to print them out for every event. So if I click condensed heat sheets this time and click select, I can choose all of the events under athletics, track and field. I can choose which rounds to print. This part's important. I'm going to want to choose preliminary so that I can see everything that's been divisioned. And then if I click print, what it will actually do is it'll show me my 100 meter run and it'll show me my 100 meter walk and so on and so forth, everything as one big pack. Here's the best part. Remember when we told you um, and bingo, we were talking about that trick where if you number your events, if you number your events under define events and print this report, it will print the report in the order of the event number. So you will have a pack that you can just hand to coaches. Makes photocopying way easier. It also means that you will get it as a PDF that you could just email to coaches and never have to print it, right? So it's, it's, a, lot, it's a lot faster. Um, you can do the same thing across the board. You'll also see that it's giving me information about um, uh, like how they entered, the information that they entered it in and so on and so forth, okay? That's your heat sheets. Your results work the same way. If you wanted to create a pack of results for everyone, you could choose um, the ones that you were doing. So select final round and print an event result report for everything in the system. I'm going to choose all of them now and click print. And you end up with everything across the board, final placement, um, you know, blah, 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 right, right across the board. Is that cool? See, and there, that's the event that we finished, first placement. So that's one quick way of doing it. The other reports that I'm going to show you just really quickly, there's a games report uh, that's actually often used where you'll see here, I've got a delegation report, auto split by delegation. If you click auto split, what it'll actually do is it'll produce individual PDFs for each team. Often, um, you know, uh, an event organizer will be asked for a PDF of the results for that team, and then you're sitting there trying to break them up. This actually does it for you. So it will automatically break up the teams um, like as, as individual uh, reports, or you can ask for a delegation report with results or delegation report results with schedules. So before a games, you might choose a schedule report, right? 
And after the games, you might choose a results report. And let me just try this here and see what it does. Um, and what it'll do is it'll show you what every athlete did um, in that event or in that games. And you can see straight across how they did, what their results were per time final. This is usually what the coaches want, right? You know, and you can just give it to them right, straight up and just print it. Okay. And again, if you auto split it, it'll give you a separate file for each, each coach. Cool. Um, there are lots of different reports. Um, under advanced custom, we actually have created a lot of like very specific reports that you'll see. Um, so you can actually access all of those. Uh, you could create labels, right? You know, if you were trying to make it easy to identify an athlete, you could actually put like um, labels on them <laughs> like and print those out. Scheduling details to check um, team results with logos and all of the rest of it. It's pretty easy to, to, to do that, okay? Jane, Jane. Um, yeah. Um, Bingo's first question right off the top uh, is about, about being Bibs report with the athlete's name, the events yep. they're in, and so that it can print out on a piece of paper that might be the bib itself that you could feed into a printer. So okay, it's, so th yeah. that's a good good question. We do have a bibs report that will print out all of the bibs, uh, like not the bibs, it'll print out all of the... Um, like who's on what bib, right? It'll do that. When you print a delegation report for a team, um, the, their bib number appears on that report uh, and you can sort it and you can actually print a bib report for each team as well. Um, so what? So those are usually useful. Um, in our experience, generally speaking, people have the pre-printed bibs, right? So we usually just give them the report and say, here's the number and we just put them in a pack together. Um, it's interesting what you're saying though about printing the bibs. Uh, we don't have a report like that, like where like, uh, like on one side it would be this and on the other side would be the bib number but we could do that so if you remember like to do this we're gonna have to go back and create a 2020 report pack anyway so um we'll add it to that and that's that's very easy to do that's not a problem we just need to know the dimensions and things like that okay um but yeah you you could do that without any any major issue um one last thing that i just want to show you just because you've been noticing the sault saint marie logo on there I just want to show you where to change that. Um, I just got to find it here. If you go into, uh, if you go back, okay. So now you're on the home screen again, where you're selecting the games. Down here under setup, I think it is. Uh, yeah. Okay, under set setup here, you're going to see a button that says report images, okay. If you click on report images, you'll see that you have the option for games logo, organization logo, and organization logo square. Um, so our organization logo was that, especially Olympics Ontario. Our organization logo square was that. Um, unfortunately, I kind of messed up, right? Usually we would leave this as a generic Special Olympics logo, which I can actually do. Um, hang on a second, let me just see if I can. No, I'm gonna have to put one in, but we'll we'll do that and we'll create it. But you can actually add your own logo in if you want to. If you've got your own local like uh, Special Olympics uh, Barry logo and you plunked it in there, then every report that has that logo on it, which are all the results reports, would show that logo in the top right. If you've got a logo for your team, you can put it in there. So that's a really easy and fast way to do that. I'm gonna change this so that it's default um, in the 2020, but um, you can make that change if you would like to. Okay, um, and and it's a really quick way to reformat the reports and make them your own. Okay. Um, all right, I, I'm gonna stop there. That's a lot of information already. Um, and um, I'm gonna uh, I'm actually gonna stop sharing my screen here for just a quick second so that I can actually see people's faces and see to what level I've um, put people to sleep. Okay, and then. I'll just change this out. Yeah, carry. Um, uh, but what one thing I guess I would say is that um, that's a lot of information, but it's also just a, a, like a lot of things to play with, right? You know, and if you haven't downloaded those training sets that I just sent, um, do that. Like, like grab them and um, and feel free to free, feel free to play around with them a little bit. Don't be afraid to wipe your entire system, as Bingo would say, right? Like wipe it all out and then start again. That's not the end of the, that's not the end of the world. It's not going to kill anything. It's, it's totally okay. Um, and if you get stuck, don't be afraid to export and figure that out. Oh, that's the one thing I didn't show you because we didn't have anything to export. So if you if you click on GMS transfer and you want to send us a file, 
it's really simple. You just go down to the, the home, like again, you're going to click on export games. And this time, what you'll choose is you'll choose one or more complete games, and I'm going to export James and Helena's fun games. And all I have to do is create the name of the file. So in this case, I'm going to call this file James's. That's oh, right. So James, do you want to be sharing again or no? Oh, I'm sorry. I got so far ahead of myself there. So excited to see all of you. Okay, hold on a minute here. Screen one. Okay, okay I'm going to start again here. Just, um, when you go into GMS transfer out of, out of the home screen, you're going to choose export games. <clears throat> One or more complete games. You choose which games you want to export. OK, and then you choose which one you want to send out. So I'm going to say in James's games, help me. OK, and I'm going to click save. And what it's going to do is it's going to export to that file. I can choose what I want to export and I click run. It pumps all of the information out into a file, and now I have that file available to transfer whenever I want to. So you'll see here, James's games help me. I just have to send that to Helena or myself and we can pick it up, okay? Uh, the only other thing I'm, I'm gonna mention and on the import is that if you get a GMS file like back, make sure you know um, what it is that you're trying to do with that file. So like if I click GMS help me here, it's pulling it in. If I import complete games, right, um, I can also choose to only import specific events um, or I can choose to update um, information. If I'm only trying to get results, you want to only import the events for the results that you've got. Otherwise, what will happen is that it will overwrite the um, other events and blank them out and you don't want that. If you've got multiple computers going at the same time, you could export the events, um, but just make sure that you import only the events, okay? Um, most of the time you're just importing your complete games, but just to be aware of it, if you've got a separate computer running at a track for shot put, you don't want importing the shot put results to kill all of your track results. That would be dangerous, okay? Um, okay, but that's it. That's export games and import games, that's fine. Okay, um, I'm gonna stop sharing my screen now. Um, yeah, and just say, like, practice makes perfect in this particular situation. There's no real way around that um, other than to say that, like, you have to kind of play with it. And our problem right now, of course, is that we don't have a lot of, of opportunities to do that, right? You know, I think the, uh, the, the, the challenge really is to just go in and pretend you're running an event and see what actually happens as you go. The good news is, is that there's usually a lot of help being provided in the bottom left-hand side of your screen because the the system will pop up like windows, right? You know, um, to go. You can always ref review back to this um, this conversation or to the website. But truthfully, if you run into trouble, don't hesitate to drop myself, Helena, um, a, a line, or even one of the DDs, um, and just uh, uh, and we're we're happy to help. Like there's uh, yeah, there's there's not too much we haven't seen um, in this respect. Okay. Um, why don't we unmute the microphones and then you guys can yell at me about how awful this is. I totally understand. Um, and then we can kind of go from there. James, where do you change the logo again? Sorry? Where do you take, where do you change the logo again? Oh, okay. If you want to change the logo on the home, on the home menu, go down to setup and then choose uh, report logos. Oh, sorry, report images is what it's called. Do you need to be inside a game? No, or you need, to be outside the games. you need to be outside the games. Oh, so okay. if, if you're if you're inside of the games, you will not see that menu. You have to go outside the games and choose setup. And then if you scroll down, you'll see an option for report images. There's actually two options there, report image mappings and report images. You yeah, report okay, got it. Yeah, I was inside the game, yeah, thank you. Okay, not a problem. All right, um, is there anything else in the, the, the questions? Really? Awesome. Duncan says much easier now. Oh yes, you're talking about timing, right? The, the two rounds? Yeah. 
So yeah, I think we- that's, that's that's actually the one that people um, often struggle with the most. Um, we do have a one pager on that. And Helena, can you just make a note? I actually don't know if it's in our um, help section, but if it isn't, we'll put it there. Sorry, the Duncan. Only, the only question I I had, I guess, it, you know, I've been trying to do the PVs and haven't been successful, but now that I've updated, it seems yeah. to be a lot better. Can I backtrack? Because what I've done with this new version is I've updated all my previous games that I have. Yep. Can I start from the beginning there with getting yes. the TV started? Yeah. So what you can do, um, what, and what you're going to notice, um, actually, I, I, I can't show it to you on our test database because we don't have enough data, but I will show it to you on um, the, the main system. We don't actually use PBs, but um, I'm just going to show you what one of the benefits of the of the main system is. Hang on a sec. No, this is awkward. Uh, hold on a minute. Let's see if work. Okay, so one of the advantages of that. is um, when you're registering somebody into a games, you can actually transfer, uh, you can actually transfer your scores. So uh, I'll use this one. Okay, so if for example, I wanted to register somebody into um, into this game, so into the New Market Falcons. Um, uh, Helena, can you give me an athlete that's not a New Market? Anybody? Uh, Anthony Johnson. Look up Anthony Johnson. Uh, it's a lot of Johnsons. Anthony. OK, there he is, Anthony Johnson. So I'm going to add Anthony to the game. So you'll see, like, in our system, because we have so much information, we can actually pull up um, a lot of things that, that people have been part of. So if I click on Anthony now and I add him to the, this games, here's the interesting thing. Um, you'll notice down here, I can see a previous games that he's attended. So he's been in like 19 different things that are on or in the system, right? Um, but then what I can also do is if I come out here and I and I go to register him, uh, Duncan, let's say I was adding him to athletics and track and field. Do you know what he runs? Um, uh, 200. 100, runs yeah. Two, That's fine. OK, what it should do, oh, we might not have anything for him under there. Yeah, there, OK. So if you if you drop him down here, I'll see every event that he's been in, right, in a previous games, right? I can also see his best result. If there was a personal best, I can also see that result as well. So what makes things really great is that I don't actually have to go back. If I've got enough of this information, I can just select it and just keep moving down the pipe. Even better would be that if you, as Anthony's coach, um, were registering for games, you could actually forward this information just by exporting Anthony's people, like in that export, over to Duncan, he would grab the delegation and it would already be there. And, you know, Bob's your uncle, right? So there's lots of options there. Again, I can select a personal best. So it looks like um, you've got to show where that personal best is. But once you've got it entered, um, I'm pretty sure it's, it shows up as one of the things that you can select. Okay. Make sure? okay. Thank you. Uh, yeah. And then if you go into the individual person, so like if I go into Rob Pipitone over here, right? You can actually also, I'm pretty sure, when you scroll down and look at like the additional data for Rob, um, I think, yeah, down here, there's an option for personal bests. It'll keep track of their personal bests within that that setup if you do it. Yeah, and the so previous you, version I was using, it had those, but it never showed anything up. That's right, because it wasn't working properly. I think now it will, so okay, that should show good. Um, all right. Well, everyone, um, if if like I said, I'm I'm here. If if uh, people have any in, in additional questions, I'm happy to like walk people through anything. Um, but but thank you for bearing with us. That went way over, and I do apologize. Uh, but um, but I do thank you all for everything that you do. GMS is uh is a great tool for sure, but it's not an easy one, and I'd be lying if I told you otherwise. So like you know, but it's. But it is one that once you get used to it, you'll find that like it's it it's more and more straightforward all the all the time. The only thing that you really need to worry about really are creating a games, 
adding events to the games, creating your people, adding people to your events, and entering results. If you can do those five things, you're set, right? You know, and that's all, all you really need to practice. And most of what I've explained can be done fairly quickly once you get used to it. Okay, cool. James, are yes. there ever any opportunities for like, this is absolutely new to me, yeah. um, but for other people like myself who have never done this before, to sit with someone at a games and actually go through it and see how it's done. Absolutely, because, yes. And almost be mimicking the same results or we do the entries while someone's over our shoulders telling us what to do. Yeah, hundred percent. And and I know bingo. Um, like I think it's fair to say that's how you and I did it, right? Like uh, I think uh, we did a training, and then um, I haunted them at a variety village swim meet, and they. they yeah, had... the more effective and I, I, I said sorry, alternative way is normally before a games, as James said and Helena said, because we only use this once a year, right? Yeah, it's not something I have to look at my notes again, right? So what happens? I give training to. Who will the volunteers be? So if there's training before the games, that's actually where you want to be. Because a lot will be explained. Because once you get to the actual games, you'll be doing something so specific. Yeah. You might not actually see correct what's happening. Yeah. Yeah. And that's a good point. And 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 actually the the that's actually a very good point because the truth is the most complicated things that you need to do in the system is setting it up, yeah. right? Once you've set it up, the actual activity that's being done by the people who are entering data is the same thing over and over and over again for the entire meet. Um, and Helena, this is the other note I'm just going to ask is we've actually created for the last sets of major games, we've created like a like an instruction sheet that is strictly for the operators that literally goes, this is what you're going to click and this is how you're going to click it. What we haven't really done is we haven't modified that to be just more a little bit more generic, but it would be actually fairly simple for us to do that. So we'll modify that and make that available because if you're an operator, that's actually all you need. It even tells you which report to print, right? Like it says, go find this report and print it, right? Like, do you mean so? Um, and it, it shows you the screens that you're going to see as you kind of run through it. So we'll we'll update that and make that available um, because I think that will actually be quite powerful and to the point where we actually uh, when Special Olympics Canada was having to deal with Thunder Bay, they used all um, of our training materials up there um, just because it made life a lot easier, right? And we we did do training with people, but the training ended up being like 30 minutes long. Like it was very simple, right? So. Is there any way, sorry, yeah. is there any way to set up like, a, like the training thing that you just did, but on a bigger scale so that we can choose when we get sort of that operators think to set up a games and look at how to do it all and sort of work on our own because a lot of this yeah. is just sit and play yeah. and yeah so um okay so the one thing that we can't do because we have talked about it right is we can't create a template games um because and this is the reason is that every games has a code you don't see it but there's a code there and so when you import to another games um it overwrites whatever's there the problem with creating a template games is that if Diane Diana uses the, the same template and then Bingo uses the same template and then Duncan uses the same template, and this is where it really gets messy, if you start sending yeah. games to each other, it overwrites the stuff that you've got, right? You know, and so like if we open that door, like it could potentially get really dangerous. Now, having said that, and we absolutely could create a demo database that just has like an existing games that you could play around with. Um, that's a little bit more expansive than what we've given you, right? But um, but as far as um, can we give you a games that's already created? The answer is no. If we did that, it would be pretty dangerous. Having said said that, our our staff, if they're looking to support you in creating the games, can probably create the games for you on the fly, one at a time, if needed. Um, and we have done that. Like that's not a that's not an issue, but you've got to do them. You got to do them as they go, right? Um, just to add to James, because I actually input. Stuff. I don't actually input stuff. I actually just upload stuff. Uh, what is unique, and I tried to do this the first time. I was horrified to find a hundred of the same name because I tried it a hundred times. My machine will will create a unique text ID for the same yeah. name in my Correct. GMS. 
So if you're using the same GMS, even if we use the same information, it's a different ID. Correct. It's a different so person. when I try, when I export it, and then you're using a different ID, which is 100% almost likely, you're gonna override and actually actually you might even create a, a different ID, user. Uh, person user in there. So the way I do it is that I I download from my GMS, it's more advanced, and get that ID, and then I match the two. Which brings me to my next question. Is it possible, because there's a lot of mistakes when, when it's sent, you know, even with the same, I have to correct coach and say, are you sure your son's birthday is like this? Because you submitted differently before, right? Is it possible to link that? Because I do a pre preliminary check before I even upload, right? Is it possible to tap into the portal information there for, the, I know you chuckled, okay. But given the ID, at least we will be able to download that information and we'll be having to so, check over and over again, right? So, so I will I, I will share something with you because there are probably a small army. I'm talking like 30 some odd university students who like, like probably loathe me because of the GMS work that I made them do for several summers, right? Um, we actually went through a pretty extensive process, that network GMS that I showed you of deduplicating the entire GMS that we had provincially. To say that that was an epic task is putting it mildly for the exact reason that you just said, because if somebody, if we had, if we had like eight different provincial games, we ended up with eight different um, users for each one. So what Bingo's getting at is that every time you create somebody in GMS, it creates a new new person, unless you specifically say I'm using the previous person, right? And the problem with the way that we're currently using GMS, so like I'm saying and like use GMS and then I'm saying Bingo use GMS and then I'm saying Duncan use GMS, is that you're creating your own databases. And if Duncan creates James Nerona and Bingo creates James Nerona, they've created two James Neronas that can't really be told apart unless they're both using the same record, right? The way to get around that, there's two ways to do it. The first is, is that what? Duncan hosts an again like an event. So Duncan's hosting his swim meet and he says, Bingo, oh, I need you to send me in the basket, I, I think. I, oh, I need you. No, maybe I took it out to the car. Uh, hold on a second. I'm just gonna... I don't know. Look in there. Um, so just um so then um but the Duncan, sorry, the Bing, it's, he says to, to Bingo, Bingo, I want you to send me your registrant. So he sends Bingo the shell of the uh, of the games. Bingo adds that games to his database and then adds the people from that database and then fires it back to Duncan. That's the way it would work. It would just bounce back and forth, right? Option number two, which is what we would like to be able to do, is what Bingo was saying, right? Which is to be able to grab all of the information in Portal and push it back out. But that requires what we call a synchronization routine, right? You know, we actually have a field, you can't see it, in, in the Portal that has a GMS ID number. And what, what our plan is, is to, is to upload the GMS ID number from, um, uh, from GMS, like from our central mass of GMS, to that 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 file, right? And then so that that way it's it's cataloged, and then for everybody that's new, pull that back to our networked GMS. What it means is that Special Olympics Ontario will have a synchronized GMS and portal, right? At which point, you would have to ask us for your team because that's the only way to get it right, right? Like, do you know what I mean? And so what that would do then is say. Like, you know, Duncan would say, well, I'm registering these people for the games. And then we would essentially push all of those people to your games and then kind of go from there. Our trick is we haven't quite worked out the business mechanics of that or the technology of the last part. We know how to synchronize it like between the two manually. What we don't uh, what we haven't been able to figure out yet is how to create a games for you guys like on the fly that would have all the people and then all you would have to do. But and I'm flagging this play for all of you guys right now, if you want to do this. You absolutely have to get all of your Special Olympics um, team managers together and impress upon them the importance of not doing anything at the last minute. Because the the truth is the only way that works is if you get your registrations in about like a week out so that we can actually get you that file, right? That's the only way that'll work. Yeah. And, and, and I was going to say that's the issue is that, you know, having set up many games, 
uh, the, the amount of additions and deletions within the last one or two days. Yes. Uh, or as you're saying, yeah, it just becomes crazy anyway. Yeah, uh, for sure. Well, so, and it wouldn't be so bad. Deleting people isn't the problem. Adding people. Becomes it's the adding. It, it's the added people that are sitting on the fence. Or modifying the times they submitted incorrectly. Well, that again, that's not as big a deal. If they've got the times in there, you can make those changes. But you, what would be difficult in the example that I'm giving you is if we've given you all of these records, if you manually enter somebody in, you've actually created um, that record. Not to tell tales yeah. out of school, yeah. but Julie's volunteers for um, not Waterloo, whatever was before Waterloo. Um, uh, yeah, the, the games before it's Waterloo. A yeah, Peterborough, right. Um, that that games, um, she actually had them manually enter in all of the things, not realizing that what was going to happen. And we had just had all of these summer students deduplicate the entire system. So everything was perfect. And yeah, and she imported the entire thing back in and we ended up with um, like a thousand extra records. And I had to go back to those students and be like, so yeah, they weren't very happy with me. <laughs> so like, yeah. That's why I have my own and I don't. Yeah. I import, but then I reassign the same ID back. Yes, that's the only way I can do it. Yeah. You can that's what the deduplication is for. That's that's what that is for. Okay. Um cool. Well folks. The last you. the last report, uh well, unless somebody wants to hear it. Because sometimes somebody gives me pre pre numbered bibs, right? And the other thing I need to do is put the events in the label. Sometimes they don't fit. So the other option to doing printing out the whole label with is just to print a label with the events of each so uh, I have athlete I and just tape it into the bib. Okay, so I'm going to show. You, yeah, you could do that. Um, I'm going to show you one other trick that you can actually use. So let me just see here. Um, can you see my screen again? Yep. Um, okay, so I need one that's got bibs. So let's go back out. Let's use that one didn't happen. So let me use my was the last school. Okay, I think this one had bibs. So <clears throat> One of the tools that you've got at your disposal is actually um, something called, like it's a bib tool, right? So see here where it says bib assignment wizard. Have you ever used this, uh, Bigo? Yeah, yeah, I use that a lot. I used to do sort it. It's the, because some, some of the uh, athletes or the coaches want the events on the bib itself, right? Right, right, right. So what you, what you, so what you can do here is that if you only have bibs, like if you only have certain bib numbers, which often happens because they get thrown away and stuff like that, you can actually set what the bib numbers are. And then you can actually then go and assign bib numbers based on like um, information that you've got by putting gaps between divisions and all the rest of it. The bib assignment tool works really well. Uh, that's one way of doing it. What we would want to do on the reporting side is actually create like a bib report, right? You know, so that what you would do then is, so I can click a bib listing here, for example, and you'll see all of the bibs um, that have been assigned to that uh, person, right? So there you go. So there's the person, the bib, like what's been assigned, and then you could sort it by um, by individual. But I think what you're saying is, is like if I've got the bib, I just want like right there. That I no, no, see no, right, right there in the bottom left of your screen. That's exactly what I want. See that two zero? Yeah, that one. <laughs> right. And so, so I think what we what we need to do is so we just need to create that report. Right, like that's all. It just doesn't exist. That's all, um, because I'm pretty sure. Well, actually, let me just see here. I don't think that there's a bib report. There might be. Load settings. Yeah, there isn't an individual bib report, right? And so what we what we what we need to do is to simply create that particular thing. But if you send us a, a description of what it is that you want to do, we can we can figure it out. Yeah. If I you will. ever want to design your own report and you're feeling really daring, you'll see here you can actually click design report and actually create a report from scratch if you wanted to. Um, and just by putting bibs and 
and things like that in there. Um, you can even use one of our existing reports as a bit of a template for it if you want to. Uh, so you can select a report that you want to start with and, and design it. But like I said, we can we can do that for you. I don't don't think that's that's necessary. It, it, it gets tricky because if you use it once a year and I've done modified some of them, right? But if you do it once a year, it's hard, right? <laughs> Right. I, sure. yeah. That's what I'm saying. Like, like I, I don't mind doing it. And in fact, to be honest, what it probably needs to be is a mailing label of some sort, right? Like a label that you can stick on the inside of a bill. Bib is one sort, right? Because otherwise, you have to double side the bib, right? Or you create it where there's a bib on the front, and then there's small like writing underneath it, which shows it. So, so maybe give us give us some some ideas of, or just sketch it out on a piece of paper, and take a picture of what it is that you want it to look like, and um, yeah, we can figure that out. I'll send it to you. Okay, sounds good. All right. Okay, so I think we're good. Um, I should, probably should have stopped recording this a while ago. So, <laughs> okay, so there we go. Uh, if we click stop recording, yeah.